Since 2009, Christchurch has hosted the International Track Meet, showcasing track and field to the world. Assisting our brightest athletes to develop from talented teens to Olympians, athletes like Tom Walsh and Angie Petty. Now we invite you to compete. The Fast Five is your five kilometre road race. A scratch start, teams based road run, finishing on the athletics track at Napuna Wai. The Fast Five is a key fundraiser for the international track meet and an integral part of the weekend. Now you and your friends can compete. Five kilometres at your pace. Plus, catch New Zealand's best athletes live in action at ITM. The Fast Five is for everyone. Three person teams, five categories corporate, crew, college, club or coach. Assemble your team for a fun Christchurch weekend. Support NZ's best athletes by supporting the Fast Five and International Track Meet. Big City Marathon meets National Road Relay meets Corporate Challenge. Another great event brought to you by International Track and Field Trust. Kia ora koutou and welcome to the 2022 edition of the International Track Meet here at Nga Punawai on the outskirts of Christchurch. My name is Nick Bewley and it's a pleasure to be part of this afternoon's coverage alongside Craig Motley and Sarah Cowley-Ross. It's of course a very different looking event this year with no crowds in attendance due to the ongoing COVID situation, but we appreciate all of you who have tuned in via the live stream on Sky Sport Next to watch what promises to be a fantastic afternoon of action. This is the seventh international track meet and the second here at this wonderful venue, Napunawai. The international track meet was first held in 2009 at QE2 and featured three national records, three world champions and 33 Olympians. A blockbuster field beckoned in 2011, but sadly the devastating earthquake four days before it was due to take place here in the Garden City meant it never eventuated. The event moved to Christ College on the grass for three years before a seven year break where we had the big shot and the street mile. Now after last year's success as an event that holds World Athletics Continental Tour bronze status, we are back to showcase some of New Zealand's best track and field stars. It's the time now to bring in my co-commentator this afternoon, Craig Motley. Afternoon, Craig. What are you most looking forward to about this afternoon? Thanks, Nick. Well, we have got some several really good events. Uh, I'm really looking forward to see Lauren Bruce in the Women's Hammer. I'm from Timaru and uh, she's a South Canterbury lass and uh, conditions today she might just throw really big. Fantastic. Well, of course, Lauren Bruce is one of our first uh, leading athletes up in about 25 minutes time. Let's cross now to Sarah Cowley-Ross, who has a bit of a conditions update for us. What can you tell us, Sarah? Kia ora te iwi, and I am trackside at the International Track Meet 2022. The conditions are a little bit dodgy if you're at home and you're on your way to the track. Bring, bring a puffer or something warm, but hopefully it will clear. I'm here with Leighton Tremaine, event promoter. Leighton, how great is it to have this event up and running again this year? Yeah, it's fantastic to have the International Track Meet back in Christchurch. Uh, it's our second year as a World Athletics Continental Tour event and we're very proud to be here for the athletes. Let's talk about the athletes. We've got a big program ahead of us this afternoon into the evening. Watch, which event are you most looking forward to watching? Well, after yesterday's press conference, I'm most excited about the Mainland Foundation Men's 800. Uh, there was a little bit of banter talk between uh, current national champion and, and junior record holder James Preston and, uh, and Myla. Uh, turned 800 metre man, Sam Tanner. Yes, well, Sam Tanner, apparently, I saw Hayden Wild last weekend at the Sir Graham Douglas International, and he was talking up his training partner, so Sam Preston won a great hot 400 there. Um, that's going to be a great battle. Personally, really looking to see some field events get underway as well. Yeah, we've got fantastic field competitors. Obviously, Lauren Bruce is uh, hoping to extend a New Zealand record. Uh, you know, she would love to see that, you know, uh, closer to the 75 metre mark. Obviously, we've got Tom Walsh, who uh, has developed uh, through the years from a, a talented teenager to a, you know, one of New Zealand's best ever athletes. Uh, he's back at supporting the meet. And, of course, the high jump's going to be fantastic, the men's and the women's. Great. Well, back to you guys in the warmth there. But let's hope this wind settles down a bit and uh, the weather gets a little bit more toastier. Absolutely. Thank you very much. That's Sarah Cowley-Ross there with Leighton Tremaine. And as they mentioned there, one of our big stars of today's meet is South Canterbury's finest, Lauren Bruce, and we caught up with her yesterday.
So getting it off the ground and having it running for another year. I mean, obviously go out there and throw as far as we can. I've got a World Champs qualifier that I'd like to get ticked off. Um, so that's definitely on the cards, but if I can just go out and enjoy myself, then I'm going to throw well and I'm going to throw far. So yeah, looking, looking forward to see what, seeing what happens tonight. It's pretty cool to be back out here. I competed in, at ITM as a young athlete. I think I first competed when I was like 10 or 11. Yeah, having it held in, in a new facility um, that Christchurch has got, got now is yeah, pretty special. Performing at Tokyo was well under par. Um, yeah, pretty disappointed with how it went, but the whole experience was pretty bizarre, like I guess it's a story to tell in the future, like not many people would have would have done a COVID games. Um, but yeah, definitely set a fire inside to to go and do it again. Um, obviously, we have Paris coming up in a couple of years now, and that's pretty front of mind. And excited to be to keep putting myself out on the world stage and seeing what I can do. So I guess it's a little bit interesting this year. We've got world champs, and then two weeks after we have Com Games. So. Um, there's a, yeah, a couple of things to come before that uh, comes right on priority, I guess. Uh, Women's Hammer this year is going to be super competitive. Um, obviously, there's myself and Julia who have already qualified and Nicole's had a couple of B qualifiers from what I've seen as well. Um, but not only that, around the world um, or the Commonwealth countries, there's a lot of girls that are throwing fire. And, uh, I think it's probably the most competitive field, at, um, they'll have the most competitive field that they've ever had out there, which is exciting because it's going to take a big throw to win, um, but yeah, also to be a part of this moment in time when everyone's just starting to like push the boundaries of the sport is very cool. I've been throwing really well the last couple of weeks and yeah, starting to get um, the nerves and everything that comes with coming into shape and um, what I've had before, I've thrown big before as well. So. Yeah, I mean, 72.50 is the World Champs qualifier and I have the New Zealand record at 74.61, so 75 plus would be, would be amazing, but yeah, we'll see how we go. If I, can, if I can go out and yeah, smile, enjoy it, and just let the ball go, then it will go a long way. So uh, it's lovely to be back in Christchurch. Um, We've done a few races on this track, uh, uh, I think a couple of years ago, we won the 5,000 metre title here, out kicking uh, Matt Baxter in the last uh, home straight, which was a pretty awesome feeling. Uh, but it's nice to kind of dip my toes into the deep end and head into the miles, so looking forward to it. Tokyo was an awesome experience, um, you know, looking at it four years ago, I kind of had the dream um, to, to go to Tokyo, uh, let alone uh, even contend for a medal. So. Uh, to come home with a bronze medal was uh, definitely a dream come true and I think um, in 2020 having that season back home uh, with the boys on the track really kind of uh, increased my pace in the run. Looking forward to this season and the, the seasons to come and yeah for me I'm really kind of for the track wise I'd love to qualify for the Com Games uh, for the 5000. It's a couple seconds um, slower. Uh, the qualification time, so it kind of gives me a bit more leeway uh, heading into a couple of races like the uh, Nationals or the, the Night of Fives and potentially head to Europe and get a couple uh, track meets in uh, before the triathlon season starts. Yeah, so I'd really love to get under the sub four uh, minute mile. Uh, we've been real close, but uh, uh, yeah, it just wasn't, wasn't my night that night after a pretty hefty training week. So uh, hopefully it's not, you know, I can uh, you know, really kind of slam it down and try and get that sub four. I heard the pace is on, so now looking, really, looking forward to it and it should be exciting and uh, hopefully the wind stays down and it should be a good night for it. Fantastic to get the insights there of two Olympians and Lauren Bruce and Olympic bronze medalist in the triathlon Hayden Wild from Tokyo 2020, of course, hold in, held in 2021. Bring Craig in here for a few thoughts on the back of those interviews, Craig. And, and starting with Lauren, she says 75 metres is definitely within her sights. Uh, today, with conditions as they are, fingers crossed, maybe we could see it. Oh, definitely. She's opened up with some 72s and 75s well within her capabilities. So, yeah, we'll, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing her bomb a big one, actually. I think she's thrown here before. She knows the circle. She knows the ground. Uh, it's pretty much her home turf. She's 
yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing what she can do. How great has it been to see the development of her as an athlete? Because I think you were telling me off air before, she started doing a bit of triple jump and then sort of uh, worked her way into the throwing fields and is now our, our leading hammer thrower. Yeah, down at the South Canterbury Club, I think she still holds a, a triple jump record. So she started off with a triple jump and uh, and she was coached by Ian Baird then, who also coached Tom Walsh uh, originally. And his whole method is teaching everybody to do everything and then they eventually specialise and she's found hammer. She's also doing the shot and the discus today true, as well. So true. she's going to be very busy after the hammer. And Hayden Wilde too, fantastic to see him here on the track. A, a really likeable character that I think everyone got to see last year when he won that bronze in the triathlon. But for him, he's, he's looking for that sub four minute mile. That would be fantastic, wouldn't it? Oh, yes, and he, he won't die wondering. That pace will be on, and if anyone else wants to beat him, they'll have to be right on his shoulder. Very much looking forward to that one in the men's mile. We, of course, have the women's mile as well in the first session. The men's mile goes at 10 to 4. That's brought to you by the International Track and Field Trust, and the women's mile is shortly after that at 5 past 4, brought to you by Pub Charity. The women's mile, that is, at 5 past 4. Well, another thrower, no stranger to this event and to South Canterbury is Tom Walsh, the two-time Olympic bronze medalist. We caught up with Tom yesterday. It's my hometown one, so it's always uh, pretty special to, to be here. Usually in different circumstances, we have my family here, my friends here, uh, and also a few fans, but uh, tonight, sadly, we obviously can't have that. But uh, it, it does mean a lot to me, this one. This is the only time I get to compete at home. I get to sleep in my own bed um, and so forth. So it's, uh, it's always exciting when, when the ITM comes around. I just go out there and, and, and try and enjoy things. I, I found that, especially last year, you know, there was a lot of, a lot of struggles um, for me personally, uh, you know, in and out, out of the circle just because of the stresses that COVID and, and so forth uh, put on a lot of people and, and also myself. So. Uh, a big thing for me is enjoying it, um, and then, and I know if I do that, then I'm more likely to loose in the circle, uh, loose beforehand, loose during, uh, and that's kind of when the best throws come for me, and and uh, and look, that gives me the best chance to throw a long way. Yeah, it's it's a pretty big year for for me personally because I've got World Indoors, um, World Outdoors, and Commonwealth Games, along with all the other Diamond Leagues and so forth. So. Uh, it's going to be, you know, obviously I'm, I'm very lucky that I'm in a place where I've already ticked off qualification for all of those. Um, and, and, and now it's just about getting in the right shape physically and mentally to, to go there and win. Um, because, I, and I don't try and hide that, that's what I want to do. Uh, and I know to win now, especially in men's shot put, uh, you've got to be in about 23 metre shape, give or take a little bit. Um, so uh, I've, you know, I, pro I was in probably 23 metre shape at, at the Olympics, but didn't put everything quite together. Uh, and, and I know that uh, kind of I'm back in that trajectory already uh, with the off-season training and, and um, freshening up now. We're starting to, starting to get closer to that and I'm well on my way for that for at least World Indoors. Oh, I think Tokyo was, was, it was amazing that it even went ahead. My goal was always to get there in, in good enough shape to have a chance at winning it. I was extremely proud of, of how I did and, and, and managing to throw a season's best in the final and also dealing with the you know, the interesting uh, affairs in the qualifying as well. So uh, it was an amazing time and also very, I'm very, very proud of myself about how I, did, how I did and how I conducted myself with all the stresses that were, you know, over that five or six month period. Uh, for me, I just always have to identify something that I'm trying to get out of the comp. Uh, and sometimes that is trying to throw it as far as possible. But sometimes it's also, also trying to feel a technical cue. Sometimes it's just moving a bit faster, uh, being a bit more aggressive. What is it today? Um, <laughs> well, it's, I'm actually going to sort that out over the next 12 hours. <laughs> That was Tom Walsh there, two-time Olympic bronze medalist. And Craig, it was a, 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 you'd have to say, a successful year there for Tom with the Olympic bronze. I know he's always striving for more, but with guys like Ryan Krauser and Joe Kovacs hitting that 22, high 22s, early 23s with regularity, it's really a challenge to top the podium in world shot put at the moment, isn't it? Uh, it's as steep as it's ever been. Those guys are throwing big bombs, and they all know with in the modern era with social media and Instagram, the, the times or the distances are up very quickly and they know what their 
their opponents are throwing and uh, they're also a pretty friendly group the shot putters they have a fair bit of banter between them so uh, yeah a lot of competition and, and Tom knows he has to throw big to stay up there Ab absolutely and one of the things that Tom touched on there was at Tokyo was his uh, as he sort of you know goes to to put the, the shot, so to speak, he, that, that sort of rotation. He was having a bit of difficulty there with his footwork. It was a bit nervous, uh, a lot of nervous people back home in, in, the, in the men's shot here this afternoon at Napunawai. We, of course, have plenty of action on the track too, and one of the very much exciting events I'm looking forward to anyway this afternoon is the women's 200 metres, and we caught up with our New Zealand two-time national champion, am I right in saying there, uh, Craig, in Georgia Hulls yesterday afternoon. I think, yeah, definitely aiming for the win again, which is always easier said than done. Uh, all going well, I think I'm looking at at least a meet record, which I think is 23.26, or and getting close to the resident and national record. Uh, post IPM, ne heading to nationals in Hastings next weekend, then looking at going over to Aussie for Aussie Champs and Brisbane Track Classic. Well, I think last year this is sort of where I I regained my sort of spark, the competitive, had a not rough few years, but just sort of average few years. And coming here, sort of re regaining that spark and that love for the 200 and that winning feeling almost. So it means a lot to me. It's been great with all the live streams. I know lots of people have been enjoying it and family and friends overseas and everything. So how do my, my mum, dad, family, supporters, you know, Rachel, it's always, it's always nice to see you guys watching. Those were the thoughts there of Georgia Hulls and Craig. Let's just have a look at some statistics here. Personal best of 23.35 seconds and a season's best just shy of that in 23.49. We have three runners who have gone under that 24 second mark. It's going to be fascinating to watch this afternoon, isn't it? Oh, definitely. Rosie and Georgia are the two to watch uh, in the middle of the track where they'll be. Uh, and they've really been unlucky with the wind. Both of them, I think, their last five runs have been uh, into a headwind. So today they definitely have a tail. Might be too strong a tail for a legal performance, but they'll be looking to run very, very fast and uh, and get down the low 23s. Uh. Quarter past three, the women's high jump, followed by the men's 110-metre hurdles at 20 past three. We also have the men's mile at 10 to four, and that is followed at four o'clock by the men's shot put and the women's shot put as well. And at five past four, we will cross through to the women's mile. And following that to 25 past four, we have the start of the men's and women's discus. Five to five, the women's 200 meters. And then we will have a break. And mentioned by yourself and Sarah Cowley Ross, uh, I guess both for runners and throwers, how much of an impact is that? Or is it more just a mental adjustment that you just have to get used to in, in conditions like this? Oh, the wind definitely has an effect. Uh, they'll want to be, they'll want a tailwind because they run faster for the sprinters. Um, though they like to have the legal tailwind, the two metres or below, uh, but they certainly like to run fast. It tells them that they're capable of, of running that sort of time, um, gives them a great degree of confidence, whereas into the wind, uh, yeah, it's, it just gives them a slow time and takes it away. So they'll, they'll be looking for a, um, you know, a fast time to help them. Uh, in the throws, the wind can be of assistance, uh, not so much in the shot put, obviously, up there and, and let the wind help it along a little bit, for sure. Well, let's turn our focus now to the women's 100 metre hurdles sponsored by Athletics Canterbury. We have six. Setting the target for the rest of them. Just on the on the hurdles, maybe for some novices out there. I mean, how crucial is that, the, the rhythm and routine and getting that first jump right? I imagine if it's just millimetres off, it can potentially jeopardise your whole your whole run. Oh, absolutely. They want to hit it absolutely correct, so then they're taking three steps between each hurdle, snapping down over the hurdles. Uh, Amy is a really fast starter. You'll, you'll see her explode out of the blocks uh, ahead of these other girls. Um, she also is used in the New Zealand relay teams as well. Uh, so we'll be looking at that as we look down. You see the, they've got the wind right behind them, so it's going to be it's going to be fast. Christina Ryan on the right, Amy in the middle, Julia Burning and Maggie Jones with uh, Maddie Wilson over on the left. And they're into their blocks. 
few seconds away from the start. Way first time, Amy Robinson, very fast over those first couple of hurdles. Oh, but she's hit one. Looks like she's stopped. Julia Burnham still going through. Christina Ryan on the right. Maggie Jones coming through. Julia Burnham and Christina Ryan. Maggie Jones might just, oh, very close there. We'll have to wait for the photo. Uh, might have been an issue on the third hurdle there for Amy Robertson, unfortunately. But we'll just uh, wait and see what those times were as they come up and uh, see how it works out. Absolutely, yes, a shame there for Amy Robertson, but as you mentioned, might be Maggie Jones on the line as we await the times. Might be a hamstring issue too for yeah. Amy, which is unfortunate. Yes, does look like a bit of a hamstring issue there, so hope she's going to be okay. Maddie Wilson in shot there. She's in several events today, also competing in the shot put and the high jump. So she'll be heading around to her <laughs> next event. One of our most promising heptathletes uh, set the New Zealand junior or under-18 heptathlon record a couple of years ago. Now in her first year as a senior and uh, transitioning to those senior weights and heights. So we should just wait for those 100 meter hurdle results. Maybe we'll just talk a little bit about the hammer, which we'll be going to uh, in a wee while. So uh, we talked about Lauren and the in the women's, but uh, we also have the two times New Zealand hammer champion in the men's, Anthony Nobolo, who's been out to 60 odd meters this year and has a personal best of 66 meters. So he'll be looking to uh, throw something along those lines. And we also have one of our most promising junior throwers in there, Liam Inchuk Wolf. Uh, he's only 18 years old. He is the New Zealand junior men's hammer and shot put champion. And last year at the age of 17, he uh, went in the shot put and finished third in the senior men's open competition wow. against the likes of uh, Tom Walsh. So he's a very talented young man and uh, he'll be throwing the senior weights today, but he's very close to qualifying for world juniors with, with, the, ju with the men's 20 weights. So that'll be a good competition as well. Absolutely, yes, that event uh, in Colombia, I believe, the, the New Zealand team unfortunately weren't able to send the team last year to the World Junior Championships in, in Kenya, but what, is, uh, what would Liam have to do here? I see he's got a personal best in the hammer of 51.58, uh, season's best of 49.8, is there a sort of official or a, a, a determined uh, qualifying mark for the Junior World Championships for the for the men's hammer, or is it different given the, the weight they're throwing at today? Yeah, so he's throwing the 7.26 today, the senior weight. So, right. But for under 20s, it's a 6 kg. Uh, so he has to get that out to about 68 metres 30 to qualify for world juniors. So he's he's throwing up in the high 50s, so he's he's not with the 6 kg, so he's not too far away. Shot put is, uh, is probably his better event. Okay, we're just hearing that uh, Sarah Cowley Ross is with one of our women's 110 metre hurdlers. We'll cross to her now. Hurdles or? Yeah, I do hurdles. Oh, cool. Yeah. Long, sh long hurdles as well? Or long hurdles as well? Yeah, yeah, that's my hurdle. Cool. Not today, though. Not today. Not today. Not today. Okay, I'm down here with Maggie Jones, winner of the 100 metre hurdles. Maggie, great to see you out there today. Uh, how did it feel in this kind of uh, windy weather over the hurdles? Um, it was very, very quick. Um, just had to make sure I didn't get carried away by the hurdles, but it was a good race of good, with a good group of girls. Yeah. A great group of girls. I know your PB is 1479. Probably you might have gone faster than that today, but you had about a four metre um, plus tailwind behind you. What's coming up for you, Maggie? Um, we've got uh, nationals coming up next week, so racing in the under 20s there against Julia. But yeah, that's it for the season, I think. And you are a 17 year old hurdler from Whanganui, so that's great to see. But you're just saying that you're actually, your favourite event is actually 400 metre hurdles. Yeah, yeah, I would prefer that over the shorter hurdles, yeah. 
Well, all the best for the national champs uh, for next weekend in the Hawks Bay. And we look forward to seeing you over the short hurdles and long hurdles and hopefully back at the ITM uh, 2023 next year. Yep, looking forward to it. Thanks very much, Sarah Kelly Ross there with the women's 100 metre hurdles winner, Maggie Jones. We've just got some times through. Craig Motley, run us through those times. Right, uh, we have Maggie Jones, as you've just seen on screen. Oh, there we have the times. 14.48 for Maggie, 14.56 for Christina, 14.73 for Julia, 15.80 for Maddie Wilson, and the wind was plus 3.6, so a legal, uh, well, slightly high on the tailwind, but some very fast times, um, which they'll take a lot of pleasure out of. Absolutely, yes. Unfortunate for those two DNFs and Amy Robertson and Alexandra Highland as well, but... Uh, Yes, the uh, the wind there, as we were mentioning before the race, uh, in terms of the PBs and the season's best as well, um, that was well clear of that with that uh, wind tailwind advantage. I think we're going to cross to some hammer throw action now, brought to you by Bremke, and uh, see if we can get some of the uh, women's throwers in action. That's Lauren Bruce. She stepped out the front on that one, so it's gone into the net. She's not too happy about that. Indeed, unfortunate for Lauren. The talk us through three throws, is that right? This after, or is it six throws, Craig? Uh, they'll have six throws. They'll get three first, then a bit of a, a change in the order, um, and they'll operate with the ones who have thrown furthest will get to throw last uh, as we go through. And now we see Liam and Chuck Wolf stepping into the circle who we talked about just before. Looks relatively happy with that. Uh, smile on the face, so we'll wait to see the distance there for Liam, 18 year old, as you mentioned, big future ahead in the hammer. Yeah, excellent with the hammer and the shot, um, it also throws fairly well on the discus, and uh, looks like we've just switched to the high jump, you can see the effects of the wind there, the officials just having to hold the bar on a little bit <laughs> as, they, as the high jumpers do their warm up, so they get their practice as they go through. Absolutely, that is starting in a couple of minutes time, the women's high jump, we will cross to that at, w at some stage, brought to you by Bishop Dale Law, uh, but uh, next event on the track is the men's 110 metre hurdles and that is at 20 past three, but we'll stick with the hammer for now and it looks like we have, that's Todd Bates stepping into the circle. So Todd and his wife, Macy, both entered in this competition. They're both hammer throwers out of the Tyree Club. Fantastic. A bit of friendly rivalry, no doubt. My mistake, that's actually Anthony Nobolo that was throwing that one. Ah, yes. Of course, 289, yes. Anthony Nobolo out of North Harbour, our national champion. See them all wrapping up warm. There's <laughs> a bit of the southerly blowing through there. I was so just thinking that. That must be one of the one of the challenges of competing uh, here on Napuna on a day where the southerly does come in is, is keeping warm. You don't want to, you know, in between your throws, having any, you know, cooling off too much and then almost having to start fresh. Just see Anthony's throw here from another angle as he winds up. Just manages to stay inside the circle, keeping it legal. And here's Todd Bates. Slightly different hairstyles, <laughs> Craig, but we'll forgive yeah, you. Yeah, you forgive me for that one. <laughs> He 
looks pretty happy with that, Todd. Threw a PB at the Solar Power meet in Wellington just a couple of weeks ago on a very wet, blustery day. And uh, he was telling me after that he actually doesn't mind the conditions. Having thrown in Dunedin and <laughs> Southam for a number of years, he just takes it as, I'm going to get out there and throw. I can't change the conditions. And uh, he goes for it. And look at it, he's even helping the... Oh, he's a left-handed left thrower, so they have to change the cage over for the right-handed throwers. Okay. He's giving the officials a bit of a hand there. Top man. This is tropical for Todd, you'd think, from the deep south, the Tyree Club. Yeah, well, he, look, he's in the t-shirt and shorts and everyone <laughs> else is wrapped up, so he's he's loving the conditions out there. It's, it's probably like a good summer's day for him. Sunblock on, even. He awaits some uh, distances coming through. But, uh, hopefully not too far away. to the hammer though and I believe it's Lexi Maples one of our local athletes Craig yeah Lexi's a Christchurch local now originally from Whanganui and uh, started off as a heptathlete before finding her way around to hammer and she's been improving each season as she comes through finished with a, a bronze behind Julia Ratcliffe and Lauren Bruce at last year's nationals Oh, she's just lost a bit of balance and stepped out the side there. It's certainly got a fair bit of energy behind that hammer that time. So we see the replay there. So am I right in saying any any footing out of the circle is a is a no throw? It doesn't matter if it's to the side. Yeah, they've got to they've got to go out of out of the back of the circle under control yep. after the hammer has landed uh, out on the out on the turf. So she's got good control there, wide, long arms, and just on release. She's just yeah, just probably a little bit of slippage, might be a little bit of moisture in that circle. I think she'll be pretty happy with that first up though. I believe that was Mace Valentine next. Tyree. Yeah, she's just put that one into the net. Macy's another Tyree athlete, a lot of them out of the, the railing. Uh, so Todd, Todd Bates' his mother, Railing Bates, fan, fantastic throws coach based out of Tyree. has a number of uh, top-level athletes out of there. So um, nicely when you see in the Tyree colours will be influenced by Raylene in some way. And here's another one. Uh, Tegan Ashley stepping in out of Southland originally, but has moved to Otago and keeping working on her hammer. be there for Tegan it looks as we cross now to the men's 110 meter hurdles brought to you by Athletics New Zealand I'll quickly run through the field before crossing to our man Craig Motley Nick Bolton James Sanderlands Thomas Maloney Joshua Hawkins Jack Henry Jared Neighbours and Max Atwell so we're looking at Joshua Hawkins in the middle of the track there multiple New Zealand champion medalist and and he also holds the New Zealand records for junior and senior men. Made a bit of a late start to the season, but ran a windy 14-13 just a week or so ago. He's away very quickly. You can see his class right at the start. He's getting ahead with Joshua Hawkins leaving it. Jack Henry on his right. James Sandyland's coming through, former New Zealand champion on the side, but Joshua's led the way, and looks like Jack Henry might have just pipped James Sandyland's for second place. But that was a very good performance for Josh. I think he'll be pretty happy with that. Looked very smooth over the hurdles. He's and definitely he showed his class there. If anything, I think he clipped the last one, which might have slowed him down slightly, but a um, good couple of strides ahead of, as you mentioned, Jack Henry there on the, as you were looking at the down the track line on the left in one of the right lanes. So we await some times and no doubt Sarah will catch up with Joshua Hawkins shortly. And in fact, I believe Sarah has Joshua Hawkins with her. We'll cross to her now. Sarah. Hi, 
I'm here with the winner of the 110 metre hurdles, Josh Hawkins, all the way from Auckland today. Josh, how was that? Yeah, I mean, the tailwind helped a lot. I'm um, sure all the boys were happy it wasn't a headwind, but a lot of fun. Uh, clean, so that's good. But uh, yeah, I'm excited for Nationals next week. Well, it's great to see you back out here. Your season best is 14 13, yep. and you are the national record holder, which is great. How many national titles are you going for next weekend? Six. <laughs> Hopefully, six. A great number. Uh, hey, we'll let you get warm. Well done out there, and uh, see you next week at Nationals. Thanks so much, Sarah. Great to hear there the thoughts of Joshua Hawkins. And gee, you'd have to think, Craig Motley next week, what do you say? Six national titles. It's going to be hard pressed to, uh, to deny him that. Yes, he looked very, very good there. Class above the rest of them as we uh, see Liam and Chuck Wolf heading into the circle. Liam's first round was out to 52.80, the second round was out to 52.85, this is his third round. Looked very smooth there. 52.85, I believe, might be a PB, Craig, for Liam. Yeah, with the 7.26, I think it is. Yep, he's down as a 51.58 PB, so that's fantastic, that's all you can ask for, isn't it? Absolutely, and uh, the previous uh, we saw previously Anthony Nobolo in the second round. Now he was out to 66 meters 44 in that second round, which is only 14 centimeters off his best. So he's obviously in top shape as well. He's crushed his season's best there, which was previously 63.7. So this is a hot start to the hammer. Just updating some of those other results. Todd Bates was out to 52.07 in the first round and 52.76 in the second round. And in women's hammer, uh, Macy Ballantyne 47.60 in the, in the first round. And all of the other throwers had fouls in the first round. So now we see Anthony, he's throwing out that 66 metres. He'll be looking for something even bigger this time around. Oh, he's just, he really went for it, but just <laughs> stepped out to the left again, just not quite blocking there, and just out to the side. But he's certainly looking ready for a big throw. Just while we're watching that, we've just got the results through for the 110 hurdles, and Joshua Hawkins out to 14.20, uh, but the wind again was plus 3.6. Still a very fast time, I'm sure he'll be happy with that. Jack Henry, 14.69. Um, that's getting close to his best as well. And James Sandyland is in third, 15.09. Thomas Maloney, 15.60. Jared Neighbours, 16.07. There you see it up on the screen. And Nick Bolton, 16.40. Encouraging signs there, as you mentioned, for Joshua Hawkins. He has a personal best of 13.69, season's best of 14.13. So just seven hundredths of a second short of his season's best, of course, with this wind advantage. But, uh, all the same, encouraging signs ahead of next week's track and field national championships up there in Hastings. some more hammer throw they make a adjustment maybe the woman's high jump as well haven't seen any distances yet have you Craig Modley no it's any heights yet for there we'll just have a height quick look through Apologies, yeah. but I, I can tell you that uh, they have started in the woman's high uh, Maddie Wilson is over 163 and has missed her first attempt at 168. Keely O'Hagan started at 168, cleared that first time. And Alex Highland came in at 158 and has had first time clearances at 158, 163 and 168. Not bad when she just came off the track at yeah. the hurdles, so she's in good touch. As we go back to the hammer, and it's Lexi Maples. Once again, just 
falling out slightly to the left. Certainly getting a lot of power behind it there, Lexi. So she'll be wanting to really get one in on her next attempt. Also from the high jump, uh, Jessica Hendren, first time over 158 and 163, and has had uh, two misses at 168. So usually it looks like in the hammer there's about five to six full rotations. It's a lot of momentum to control. I guess that's probably the, the absolute art to it is not only letting it go, but keeping the footing in. Otherwise, it's, it's really uh, all for nothing. Yeah, the hammer throwers have a bit of saying that you really have to practice uh, throwing the hammer and not letting the hammer throw you. And they've built up so much momentum uh, as they go around, they really need to control it right at the end. Here's Mace Ballantyne out of tidy, and again, just over to the left, and uh, just wondering whether that wind might be affecting a few of them as they rotate through the, uh, through the circle there. round attempt in the hammer from Todd Bates was out to 53.03 so slight improvement getting closer to his best but uh, not quite uh, there yet so we see Tegan Ashley into the circle. So she had a foul first up she'll be looking to get one in the sector. Good there from Tegan by the looks. Let's get one on the board. You can see this really well in slow motion as she just winds up into a big long arms, the longest lever they can. And then release and stay controlled and in the circle. got the distance coming through for Liam and Chuck Wolf's third attempt was 51.17 so not as long as his attempt in uh, round two his new personal best of 52.85 but three throws over 50 I think he'll be pretty happy with that start now Diane Shepard Oates into the circle personal best of 57.44 and a season's best of 56.34 for Diane Very close. Let's just see what the officials have to say about that. They're marking it out in the sector, so looking like she stayed in the circle there, nearly overbalanced. So they build up a bit of momentum and start there. Rotations, long arms again. So we cross briefly to the women's high jump, and we have Alexandra Highlands hitting the bar on that attempt. That'll be her first attempt at 1 metre 73. Cleared her first three heights comfortably. Obviously getting up closer. Her personal best, 177, and a season's best of 174 at the Cooks Classic a couple of weeks ago. Looks like we have Keely O'Hagan here. Oh, Ooh. just missing that. She'll be a bit disappointed with that. I think she was just about over the bar there. You can see the uh, the wind certainly blustering about in there. Kelly, uh, two-time national champion, current ITN champion.
Yes, Keely was our winner last year. It's on her home turf. She looks a bit stunned by that, <laughs> so she may not have uh, felt that she hit it that hard, but uh, obviously the wind is playing an effect. You can see Sarah in the background over there having a bit of watch, and now we see uh, Alex coming out for her next attempt. And we can tell you that Maddie Wilson has bowed out of the high jump. Uh, Cleared 158 and 163, but had three misses at 168. As did Jessica Hendren. It's just Keely and Alex left in the competition. Alex just not really getting up as high as she probably wanted then. She'll have one more attempt. Very close though, just the flick of the heels. Yeah, diff difficult conditions in this wind. You can see the trees in the background there just blowing around a bit, uh, not making it easy on the run ups uh, for the high jumpers. Alex, of course, from Auckland, so maybe not as familiar as Keeley to, uh, to these conditions, not quite as blustery. Yeah, Keeley training down here with uh, Terry Lomax, who also coaches Hamish Kerr, and uh, so yeah, trains on this high jump pan a great deal, is very familiar with it, and uh, is probably used to the blustery conditions that we uh, sometimes get at <laughs> Punawai. Absolutely. As we go back to the hammer, it looks like Liam and Chuck Wolf getting ready for his next round. Trying to improve on that new personal best. 18 year old out of Papakura. That is a bit short of the 50 meter mark by the looks. And Lexi Maples, we saw a couple of her attempts. Uh, she's failed all three of her first attempts, so she's having a little bit of trouble in the circle there. Lexi, and in the men's hammer, just an update. So we mentioned before, Anthony Nobolo out to 66.44, season's best for him, 14 centimetres up his personal best in round two, and then a, a foul in round three, opened up with a 61.02. Todd Bates. 52.07 to start, then a 52.76, and then improving it again, 53.03 in the third round. So uh, he'll be happy if he keeps improving like that. And, uh, so currently Anthony Nobolo in first place, Todd Bates in second, and Liam and Chuck Wolf in third place with a new personal best of the 7.26 kg hammer. Update on the women's high jump. Uh, so, update on the women's high jump. There we have Kira Hagen over 178 on the second attempt. Our apologies for any uh, delay in your coverage. There was a couple of technical difficulties, uh, but Keeley's gone clear at 178 after second attempt clearance at 173, and she is the last left in the competition after Alex Highland bowed out with three misses at one metre 73. So Keely O'Hagan still jumping, and uh, she will be going from 178 up to 182 for the for the next height. Here she is. Here's Keely on the runway. Season's best of 1.83, so certainly creeping her way towards that mark of PB set back in 2020 of 1.85. Women's high jump brought to you by Bishop Bow Law. Very close there. She knows she could just about have that. Look at the 
amusement on her face when very difficult conditions for the high jump. You can see the officials there just having to hold the bar on in the wind. <laughs> Good time here to get some feedback from the coach. Yes, as you can see, based on how put on for the victory. It's a fun run. It's a fun run. Now you're you're repping the the Whippets Running Project today. I've seen a few of you guys in results out there. Love the hot pink, by the way. Tell us a little bit about the Whippets. Yeah, uh, we're a new club that uh, established ourselves in Auckland. Um, just trying to bring a, a new scene to running, uh, you know, a fresh face and uh, kind of just challenge a little bit of the uh, norms that, that uh, running is kind of set. Uh, so I just moved to Christchurch, so we're trying to establish down here as well. We've got the black and pink and the white and pink, so yeah. Now we've got the national championships in the Hawke's Bay next weekend. Uh, what what events will we see you in and who will you be representing there? So I'll, I'll be in my Auckland singlet, but uh, at heart I'll be repping the whips. Um, but I'll be in the senior men's 1500, so uh, that should be a pretty, pretty dicey race. Uh, yeah, I'll cover for you, Russ Green. There we go, a bit of smack talk to finish that. And congratulations to David Lee, personal best today in the men's 800. Back to you guys in the commentary box. Thanks very much, Sarah. Yes, David Lee in the men's 800 metre B. Fantastic time for him. As we cross back now to the men's hammer. We'll just update you on the results for that uh, men's 800. David Lee was the winner in 157.79. Uh, very windy conditions, as you saw. Uh, still a personal best for him after running 3.49 for 1500 at Sir Graham Douglas last week. Second was Alex Martin from Karori and Wellington in 158.11. Same time as Josh Brown, local boy from here in Christchurch, representing Papanui Tok H, 158.11. And Liam O'Donnell took out fourth in that, 158.56. Anthony Nobolo into the circle. He'll be looking to improve on that 66 metres in the second round. Just keeps his footing there, does Anthony. That was his fifth round throw. In the fourth round, his distance was 64.79 metres. So he's definitely getting them out there around that 65 metre mark, 66 metres. So he'll be looking to go big. We'll just see a replay of Liam and Chuck Wolf's previous throw. For those of you like me who got caught out by that uh, 50 metre mark there in the field, that is for the discus, so not to be deceived by and the distances in the hammer. And Liam was out to 51.80 in round four. To the women's field we go now, Lexi Maples looks like. Church Old Boys Athletics Club. And that looks like a legal throw for Lexi after four fouls to start. She'll be pleased to get one in the sector. Heading over to the coach for a bit of a debrief on that throw. the replay of Liam's previous throw. So we see Tegan Ashley of the Tyree Club coming in. Best throw so far of 46.72 metres. She's all well over to the left there and is just uh, overbalanced out to the side. I wonder if the hammer throws, do they do much sort of 
counter dizziness type things and things like that it might be a question I have to ask Lauren or Bruce or one of the other athletes but I just think going at that velocity the best part of five or six rotations oh, it must be spinning a little bit <laughs> absolutely they need to be able to, to keep their balance and where they are as we see Macy Ballantyne into the circle just getting her position right at the back there so she can use the whole circle Macy's just put that one into the net there. So first round of 47.60, but then having a little bit of difficulty in the circle. So that's uh, her fourth foul. Conditions possibly not helping the hammer throwers out there. Get you to hold that thought, Craig, and we'll go to Sarah Cowley-Ross. Yeah, with the women's high jump winner today, Keely O'Hagan, unbeaten this season, Keely. That was a narrow attempt at 182, 176 for today. What do you rate that? Um, pretty happy with today's conditions getting 78. It was, uh, it's not very nice. Well, actually, it's a great summery Christchurch day today. Um, but no, I mean, it's pretty hard in this wind, massive gusts. Um, I can't complain too much. Like, we just gotta get out there and have fun and it's good to be healthy and competing before nationals, so. And you look like you are having fun this season. The music's going in the background. You're dancing along. You've got your beautiful pink jacket on today. I actually rate this jacket as the best jacket out here today. Quite envious, not going to lie. What What does the week look like for you leading into nationals now? Um, I've got quite a lot of rest days, so I don't have any more gym sessions. It's a lot of rest, uh, which is really nice because I've got other things that I need to get um, done. But, yeah, just a couple of technical run-up sessions, and then there's not much more we can do. We've done all the hard work. And what's your aim for the after nationals for the rest of the the year 2022? Um, well, we've got Oceania's in June, so that will that's kind of our aim. I'd like to get in the top three of that. I got fourth last Oceania's in 2019. Um, I'm going to Sydney Track Classic at this stage, um, so that will be really cool to add on, continue on the season. Yeah, so I think Oceania's is kind of the aim at the moment. Obviously, if comms, I know that there's I know there's a couple of comms qualifiers in me, um, but you know, it's just all up to weather and other conditions, so we'll see. Well, it's great to see you out here at the ITM 22. Again, a victory today for Kelly O'Hagan in the women's high jump. Back to you in the commentary box. Thanks very much, Sarah Kelly Ross. Yes, with Kelly O'Hagan, who is the winner of the women's high jump, who will run through those heights there, as you see, 1.78 metres. A little down on her personal best of 1.85 and sees a best of 1.83, but all things considered with the wind, an impressive effort. Alex Highland, 1.68. Maddie Wilson, 1.63. And Jessica Hendren, also with 1.63 as well. As we count down to the men's mile, and we are underway. We see the pacemaker there, Ethan Smolay going to the front. The other's going to try and tuck in behind him there, get the best shelter from the wind as they go down the back straight. So Ethan Smolley leads Cameron Avery there, then the, uh, the bright yellow singlet of Hayden Wilde in third, and you can see them leaning into the wind down that back straight. Tough conditions for the distance runners. So Ethan Smolay still leads with Cameron Avery behind him, then Hayden Wild, Saxon Morgan, another triathlete tucked in behind there. Chanel Muir, my dark horse that we mentioned earlier, just comfortably at the back of that bunch. William Little bridging the gap between Chanel and the others. Dan Roswell there, Cameron Clark, Charlie Hazlitt from Port Hills. Ethan Smolley still leads. Cameron Avery tucked in behind him as they go into the wind there. Hayden Wild looking very comfortable in third there, actually. So it'll be interesting to see how he goes. Saxon Morgan, untested at the mile. He's an under-23 New Zealand triathlon rep, world champs. So he'll be looking to get some bragging rights off Hayden Wild, I imagine. William Little just bridging the gap between the group there as 
Ethan Smolle just extends it out a little bit, working really well into the wind just to lead these guys along to a solid time. Hayden Wild comes around, Cameron Avery's chasing the pacemaker. And Chanel Muir just looming up. He's just bridged the gap very easy. He's got an incredibly strong finish in the Canterbury 800 metre champs just last week in similar windy conditions, ran a 55 second last lap. But Hayden Wilde's just opened up a little bit of a gap on him there. Charlie Hazlitt leading the second group. Young Daniel Prescott, only 15 years old there at the tail, ran a 3.59.1500 a couple of weeks ago here. Ethan Smolley leading again into the wind, working very hard. Hayden looking very comfortable behind him, and Chanel Muir has just closed that gap easily. So Ethan Smolley will be just getting them to 1,000 here, trying to take the wind as much as he can. And he steps aside, and then it's Hayden Wild, Chanel Muir right behind him. Then about a 20-metre gap. So I imagine the pace will start to come on now with 500 to go. Hayden Wild getting the arms working, Chanel Muir sticking with him. He has got an incredibly strong finish. So Hayden will be trying to drop him, I'm sure he's aware of it. They've opened up a good 20 or 30 metre gap, looks like Cameron Avery leading the second group, Charlie Hazlitt's in there, Will Little, Saxon Morgan's still there. Cameron Avery leads them through as they get the bell, Charlie Hazlitt, Saxon Morgan, Will Little, Cameron Clark, Jacko Tahaya, Chris Dryden, Daniel Roswell, and young Daniel Prescott. They head round now with 300 to go. Hayden Wild working hard into the wind. He's certainly not going to make it easy for Chanel. He's drifting wide to tell him to go through. Looks like Chanel's just sitting there and easing in. Bit of tactics coming in. It'll see what happens off this last bend. Wild still leads. Muir on his shoulder, 120 to go now. They'll feel the southerly come in behind them. And there goes Hayden Wild. He's got the arms going, but Chanel Muir is stepping up as well. Big, long strides. And it looks like Chanel's, oh, they're neck and neck. Hayden Wild's not going to give it up. Oh, and I think Hayden Wild might have got Chanel Muir on the line there. What a finish. What a finish. Photo finish, as they say, indeed. Hayden Wild and Chanel Muir. Well, you cannot beat that determination. That is why he is an Olympic medalist. Not really known for the mile distance, but he just went through the whole way and just enough strength right at the end to pip Chanel. We'll wait for the official times, but uh, looked like he just nudged him at the end there. As the rest of the runners come through, hard conditions in those wind you saw as soon as the leading couple got away and the others had to push into the wind down the back straight that the gap opened up straight away fantastic effort from both athletes let's not forget too Craig Chanel Muir just 19 years of age oh, he's incredibly talented uh, like I said a couple of the he, he won the Canterbury 800 last weekend, beating a couple of runners who are in the A800 later on tonight who have run 152 and 153. So the time wasn't super fast last week because of the windy conditions, but he showed he has the range. And a couple of weeks ago, he also won the Canterbury 5,000 metre championship. So big range between 800 and 5,000 and only 19 years old. Big future ahead indeed. We wait to hear from Hayden Wild uh, a little bit later with Sarah Cowley-Ross. We'll cross back now for the women's hammer. And it is Mace Ballantyne in action in the ring. She stayed in the circle that time, so she'll be pleased with that. Mace Ballantyne, that's her last attempt in the hammer. She had a first round 47-60, followed by four fouls. So she'll be happy if that one is a little bit further than her first round, I think. keeping her footing there as we watch this it's fantastic to have these slow-mo replays available to us as well this afternoon really just goes to show the effort put into each and every attempt 
and st standing by now with Sarah Cowley Ross. Who well, I'm here with the Ben Smile Olympic bronze medalist in the triathlon, but on the track today, Hayden Wild. You left it to the line. Yeah, well, uh, I normally don't have a kick, so I was actually pretty, I was pretty happy with myself getting that little dip in the line there. I was like, I was talking to Sam pre-race, and he was like. 400 meters has got to hurt, just surge every 100 meters. So I was like, surge, surge. And then I did some biking tactics. I went out to like fourth lane. So <laughs> old mate got a big ass headwind, and I think we both suffered there. And he got in front of me at the like last 50, and then I was like, nah, I'm going to go, and got him. <laughs> well, you did. It just shows all little kids out there run right to the line. Now, last week at the uh, at the Sir Graham Douglas International, you, ran, you paced uh, Julian Oakley in the, you ran to 800, he, he did the, the 1500. Then you jumped in the 5k <laughs> a few minutes, you know, a few hours after that. What are you going to jump in today? Um, well, you've just given me the idea to do it 800, but I'm out there as well in my depth. The, fifth, the mile is, is, is getting very borderline of what I can uh, can do. So uh, if I had to, I'd, I'd, had, I'd go B final, but A final, that it's, those guys can have it. I think the fastest I've gone is like a 155. Those boys have guys sub 150, so even in the wind. But uh, yeah, now I'm looking forward to nationals. This is a great tune up for next week, and yeah, it should be good. So nationals, let's talk about which event you're going to do. Uh, you've you've said to me that you're going to target the 5k qualifying time for Com Games. What will you be lining up in the Hawks Bay next weekend? Yeah, it's going to be tricky. I don't think I'm um, like realistically I won't be close to the uh, uh, the Commonwealth Games qualifier, but I'm going to go out real hard. Uh, I'm going to try and aim for uh, sub 30, 40. I'm going to put it out there and just give it a go. And if I blow, if I, if I blow, I blow. Like that's just kind of how I race. So I'll see if I can get there to the end. But uh, yeah, it's just going to be kind of see where I am in fitness wise, and then try and push that through um, to not a fives. I think that's the the biggest goal. It's going to be fast. We're allowed paces at that race where uh, nationals we're not allowed paces. So yeah, it should set me up quite nice for that one. Hey, well, we love seeing you out here, Hayden Wild. It's always a treat to see your gutsy effort, uh, all or nothing, like you say, and uh, good luck for next weekend. We can't wait to see you on the track again. Back to you guys in the commentary box. Thanks, Sarah. That is Hayden Wild, the Olympic bronze medalist from Tokyo in the triathlon last year, as we see the times for the men's mile on our screen. Four minutes, 9.24 seconds, just, what is it, seven hundredths of a second splitting Hayden and Chanel there on the line. It was a fantastic wow. edition of the Men's Mile and Greg Watley, he's given himself a few options, hasn't he Hayden? If he's not going to compete in the try, he might do the 5k at, uh, at Birmingham. Absolutely. I, I know his coach Craig Kirkwood has, has had a look at the timetable and I think it fits pretty well that he can do the triathlon and the sprint try relay, which uh, they also did really well at, uh, at the Commonwealths and Olympics in. And and then there's a, a few days rest until the 5,000. So certainly being able to do both is, is achievable. And uh, he's got to be in pretty good run shape coming off the bike. And obviously if he can recover well enough and take that into the 5,000, provided he gets the qualifying time, then that's absolutely doable. Here we see Lauren Bruce in the hammer. And Lauren's had a couple of fouls and a throw in the low 60s to date as we see the replay yeah lauren had a couple of fouls early on then out to 61 94 in the third round 64 83 in the fourth round which is her highest and 61 88 in the fifth so this is her last round throw her final distance there again tricky conditions as you can see the trees and branches flapping about in the distance but there we have it the official results and Lauren Bruce with a best of 60 poor, uh, 64 rather 0.83 Diane Shepherd Oates 54.15 Lexi Maples with 51.26 Mace Ballantyne 47.6 and Tegan Ashley 46.72 so I guess Craig Lauren a little bit down on her personal best of course which was set over in the United States last year but again the, the caveat here is tricky conditions for not just our runners but our throwers too. Absolutely the, uh, the wind is blowing them around the big gusts won't help in the circle as we see Andrea Hewitt another uh, Olympic triathlete three-time Olympic triathlete who's entered in the women's mile doing her warm-up down the back straight there so be interesting to see if she can emulate uh, Hayden 
a few minutes ago. Absolutely. Isn't it fantastic to see Andrea here? I believe upcoming 40th birthday, 40 years young, not too far away, but uh, an incredible triathlete over many years. Commonwealth Games medalist, I believe back in Melbourne, 2006. Always there or thereabouts at the Olympics as well. I think uh, three top 10 finishes extraordinary athlete that we're lucky enough to see here in the women's mile which is about three or four minutes away as we look at the start list and Craig Motley who are your eyes on in particular here? Well this is a very interesting race there is a, a number of quality athletes there Penelope Salmon from ACA 18 years old about to go to Harvard University on a US scholarship so uh, Ivy League very hard school to get into and a very talented runner so last week at the Sir Graham Douglas, she ran a 4 minute 27, 1500. Uh, but then also we have a local Tilly Hollier from South Canterbury, uh, runs up here a fair bit. So she ran a 427 here in Canterbury the day before. So could be very interesting in, the, in this wind, depend on, the, uh, on how they handle the wind as they go through its tough conditions out there. They'll be looking to tuck in behind the pacemaker, uh, the pacemaker. And, and the pacemaker we should mention, of course, is your daughter, Neve. Yes, Neve is in there, so she's a little bit nervous about pacemaking duties, especially in this wind, but I'm sure she'll be fine. And really, it's just about uh, providing a little bit of cover and getting the, the race going over the first 800 metres or so. But we have a number of really talented uh, juniors uh, in this race. The, the Brown twins, uh, Bella and Chloe Brown, who have won numerous national titles and medals between them. They're off to UCLA in, in August on scholarships. Um, they're also both in the New Zealand under-18 hockey squad, so very wow. talented uh, sports people. Uh, Andrea Hewitt, we've already mentioned, uh, is obviously a three-time Olympian, uh, World Cup champion over triathlon distance. Don't know if she's run a mile for a while. Uh, Eva Pringle, the national steeplechase champion, is in there. Neve Mulai, Susanna Lynch, another uh, top distance runner from Wellington, uh, as well as some of our younger juniors. So Elspeth McGuinness out there on the left ran a personal best 1,500 metres last week at the Canterbury Champs. So the race will really be on uh, from the start. See the hair blowing around a bit, though the wind may have dropped just a little. They're all trying to stay warm. George Rose Dawson in there, local from Papua Nui Tok H. And uh, Neve Mulai, another Papua Nui Tok H runners, they're both off to the States on scholarships uh, in August as well. And uh, on the outside there is the pacemaker, Neve Motley, Tilly Hollier on the inside, Sequoia Prentice, Chloe and Bella Brown, Eva Pringle, Andrew Hewitt, Georgia Rose Dawson, Neve Mulai, Penelope Salmon, the tall finger on the left, Susanna Lynch, and Elspeth McGuinness. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. They're off. Eve Motley going to the front just to set a bit of a pace. Susanna Lynch going early and tucking in behind her. Tilly Hollier up there at the front. Penelope Salmon in there as well. And they'll be advised to all try and tuck in and stay in a bit of a bunch down the wind. Susanna Lynch following Neve Motley there as they come around to 200 metres. Just coming up, this is into the wind, so it's hard work and there you can see that. So just 35 seconds through there, so that's pretty good pacing. We'll be looking to go through the first lap in about 70, 71 seconds. So pacemaker Neve Motley out the front. Susanna Lynch, one of the Brown twins, 114 is Bella Brown. Penelope Salmon in fourth, Tilly Hollier in fifth. Now they're closing up a bit. Eva Pringle coming down the inside, just closing up, coming past Penelope Salmon, staying right up there. Yes, they come through now, 400 metres in 110, so right on pace. So they'll still be setting it up. The field just stretching a little bit of a gap, opening there between a first and second bunch. They'll want to stick into that and say head into the wind. You can see them starting to work again into the wind. It's very hard work down that back straight in these conditions. You can see the net blowing on the hammer cage. So Neve Motley leaves, Susanna Lynch, Bella Brown, Penelope Salmon, Tilly Hollier, Chloe Brown in there as well. Eva Pringle, 
and Andrea Hewitt still tucking on the back, running a very, very good tactical race, as you would expect. She just needs to sit in there and let the others do the work into the wind. And uh, we'll see if she can emulate Hayden. As they come around, you see the wind again, and Motley stretches it a little bit. Susanna Lynch tucking with her. Bella Brown, Penelope Salmon, and Tilly Hollier, the two taller figures in the middle there. Eva Pringle also has a very strong finish. And then Chloe Brown on the back of the bunch. As they head through. Andrea Hewitt might just be starting to drift there. Now they're going to be coming through 809 metres very shortly in about 225, 226. As they go through, Motley pulls off to the inside, so leaving them to their own. Penelope Salmon has decided to make a bit of a move. She's come around the outside and put the pace on a little bit. Tilly Hollier responds. She's tucked in right behind her, letting Salmon do the work. Both run under 4.30, which is a, a big type woman recently. Eva Pringle trying to bridge the gap. Andrea Hewitt's just dropped off that first bunch a little, and Georgia Rhodes Dawson leads the second bunch. So you see the long stride of Penelope Salmon off to Harvard, as I mentioned earlier. Fantastic runner. Obviously, pretty high academic standard to get into a top university in the Ivy League as well. quite looking forward to seeing what time Tian Welch can do in the 200 metres. Absolutely, yes, and, and given the starting position of the 200, he'll have a uh, enjoy that bend to be able to build that speed, and then the wind will be at his back, and he can really let rip, as we've seen uh, over the last couple of months. Tian, of course, is the New Zealand resident 100 metre record holder now, equal record holder, I should say, with 10.18 seconds uh, between him and... Eddie and Keita, they yeah. are nipping at each other's heels. Uh, I'm looking forward to just seeing what Tian, he doesn't run too many 200s, but uh, he'll just, he'll, I mean, he'll, will, he'll want to lead a wind, but I think he'll want to run fast too, so just really be seeing um, how low into the 22nd 200 metres he can go and just set a bit of a target. And then I believe he's planning to head to... Um, Head to Australia and hopefully race against Eddie in some of the quick, um, the quick Aussies once he gets over there. Definitely one to look forward to later this evening here on Sky Sport Next coverage of the international track meet here at Napunawai. That one, the men's 200 metre sprint race, is at quarter past six. Brought to you by the New Zealand Charitable Trust. Craig Modley, you've got the times in front of you uh, for the women's mile. Yes, I do. And so Penelope Salmon, the winner in 4 minutes, 48.93. So 72 seconds a lap, or, or just under, for the mile distance. So that's 4 minutes, 30, 1500 pace. And these conditions, really, really great running. Tilly Hollier, 4 minutes, 50. Eva Pringle, 4.58.54 in third. Bella Brown, fourth. Chloe Brown, fifth. Andrea Hewitt, Susanna Lynch, Elspeth McGuinness, Georgia Rose Dawson, Sequoia Prentice, Neve Mulai. Uh, made up the rest of the field. Uh, we're going to switch to the shot put now, and I'll be stepping aside as we bring in the maestro, Dale Stevenson, uh, to give us some technical commentary to, along with Nick. Indeed, as uh, Craig Motley exits stage left, a bit like his daughter Neve just there in the women's mile, and we bring in Dale Stevenson, coach of Lauren Bruce in the hammer throw. Welcome to the mic, Dale. I think just before we bring you in, we will cross to the field and Sarah Kelly Ross, I believe, is within with our Women's Mile winner. today Penelope, Penelope Salmon sorry from Auckland uh, 4.48 today in some really tricky conditions when your PB is 4.45 how did it feel out there? It felt um, it felt very hard down the back straight with the wind but luckily I was so grateful for the first two laps that we had a patient and I was kind of sitting third or fourth so I had some people to block the wind for me there and then I knew when I got down that back straight I just had to shorten my cadence like I've been practicing at training 
to make sure that I could get ahead on that last lap. Yeah, so. <laughs> Well, you did get ahead on that last lap. Some really great front running there. Now, a little birdie tells me you're actually off to Harvard University shortly on an athletic scholarship. So congratulations for that. Uh, and when, when do you depart? They don't actually do athletic scholarships at Ivy League, but um, I depart in August, so I'm really, really excited. Yeah, yeah, I love the team and I love the coach, so I'm so, so excited to be going there. And next week at Nationals Penelope, what events will we look forward to seeing you in? Uh, definitely the 1500, super excited, really hoping to do a P PB there. So uh, yeah, I guess we'll see how it goes down there. Now I noticed as well, as you cross the finish line, some of the other girls were saying congratulations on the prize money here on offer today. Uh, and you gave a little bit of a whoop whoop, uh, which is exciting. Isn't it great to have prize money for athletics competitions in New Zealand? Definitely, definitely a good motivation, good excuse to come down here to race. Definitely very happy a week's worth of pay is in the bank. <laughs> hey, well, congratulations on your run today. Great, great to see you out here competing and we're looking forward to seeing you at National Champs next week. Back to you guys in the commentary box. Thanks very much, Sarah. Yes, congratulations there to Penelope Salmon. Exciting times ahead with heading off to Harvard as we cross now to the men's shot puts brought to you, men's and women's shot put brought to you by Spectrum Print and Dale Stevenson. Long time coach and mentor of Tom Walsh, still coach of Lauren Bruce is alongside me. Thanks for joining me, Dale. A bit warmer in here. Uh, how has it been, first of all, with the, the hammer throw uh, earlier this afternoon? Oh, well, uh, lovely to be here and beaming out around New Zealand and around the world. I, uh, I'm glad we can show one of our best days here. And um, Yeah, we just wrapped up the, the mixed hammer throw, uh, men's and women's hammer, and thawing out a little bit. Um, <laughs> in this beautiful tent but look I must say the athletes did a, a great job battling some pretty tough conditions out there um, essentially throwing straight into a, a howling wind um, and the pick of the bunch would have to be Anthony Novolo uh, with a, a new PB to win the men's hammer uh, going over 66 meters for the first time it's been brewing for a little while for, for Anthony and um, to pull that out in these conditions is really promising and certainly uh, in on a different day, we'll put him closer to 70 metres, which is which is pretty exciting um, for for the men's event, which has been dormant for a while. And uh, the women battled hard, and as I said, in pretty adverse conditions. Uh, the wind here eff does affect the the 4k hammer quite significantly more than it does the, the men's hammer, so uh, which is almost double the weight. And yeah, I think all the athletes there were quite a few fouls uh, as a result in the competition, um, but. Yeah, everyone managed to uh, find their rhythm a little bit and I think Lauren ended up taking it out with a, a throw in the mid-60s, 65. I uh, need to get the final uh, result to give you the centimetres on that one. And speaking of Lauren, we're seeing her here in the shot put, uh, later in the discus as well, I believe. So Yeah, I think she's got a pretty full afternoon, but I'm clocking off coaching duty. She can, <laughs> she can fly solo for these ones. Um, no, it's good. She's If it uh, plays out that these events are after her preferred event, which is obviously Hammer, then yeah, she'll jump in the field and uh, enjoys, still enjoys dabbling her hand in, in the others. As we see, Tapanisa Javier here, stepping into the ring, a rotator. More and more women rotating, which is good to see. She's off to the University of Arizona uh, later this year, which is exciting for her. Uh, Div 1 scholarship to go and compete over there. Just 18 years of old, uh, 18 years of age. Personal best of 15.92. That's up, Nisa. Yeah, she's she's come along leaps and bounds, and uh, again from a, a mixed event background, she's a hurdler and a sprinter and a thrower, and has found her way into specialising in rotational shot, which is which is exciting and and continuing the lineage of obviously a pretty successful event uh, in in New Zealand's athletics history. So. Looking to follow in the steps of of Valerie and Maddie Weshi, and um, to see Tafanisa coming through is uh, is wonderful. Another youngster there, this is the first throw I believe, and Natalia Rankin Shitaz, just 17 out of Papatoi. Personal best and season's best of 14.87. So, Dale, a lot of youngsters starting to come through. I'm just looking here 17, 18, 19 year old Maddie Wilson, I believe, is next in the field so almost a dawn of a new era for domestic shot put for the women in New Zealand. Yeah we've got I mean 
there's been someone cast a pretty large shadow over women's shot in, in this country for the last couple of decades. And um, without Valerie here competing, uh, seeing the the new life bloom through, and uh, not only specialist shot putters, but people who are heptathletes and and from other event backgrounds uh, dabbling their hand at it, which is exciting to see. And um, certainly, that's uh, shot has has been in a rich place now for a few years in New Zealand, and, and we're very lucky to have. Um, some great role models. Uh, even looking in the ring right now, I've got um, Christina Ryan, Christina I believe. Ryan, who's a who's a heptathlete by trade, and even to see her employing the rotational technique, which is probably something even certainly ten years ago, maybe even five years ago, you just wouldn't have seen. It was uh, shot was kind of the ugly duckling for <laughs> for those multi-event athletes, and and now to see them getting it, bringing a bit of life to it, it's uh, I think they're going to have to churn through this competition pretty quickly to get it in bef in this first session. Absolutely, yes, we have the discus to come, brought to you by Group Web Design in this session before it is rounded out by the women's 200 metres at about 5 to 5, brought to you by the Christchurch City Council as we go back to the ring. We've got Holly Robinson here, Holly uh, Robinson. Paralympic champion in the javelin, who's also dabbling her hand uh, in the shot this year could be corrected but I believe that there's shot at the uh, Commonwealth Games in her category so Commonwealth Games doesn't have all events right. uh, for para it does have a smattering of some and um, she's certainly a, a capable shot putter around the 10 meter mark we've got some results coming through here uh, from the second round uh, Tapanisa had a throw of 13.65 and Natalia 13.95. Uh, Christina Ryan, who we just just saw, went 11 metres 11. Lexi Maples, 12 metres 43. And Holly there was 9.07. Uh, so we are approaching the middle of this competition here, and it's a mixed competition with men and women throwing together, so a reasonable time between throws. Uh, the men's results so far through two rounds, we've got uh, Tom Walsh in the lead at 20 metres 58. Nick Palmer at 18.09 in second. Jared Neighbours, 13.04, having a good battle with Cooper Killick at 12.43 uh, in third and fourth, respectively. And here it looks like Jared Neighbours. Jared Neighbours, a javelin thrower, uh, predominantly. He's had a great season, uh, really stepping out now into the consistently into the mid-60s and pushing up towards 70 metres as a javelin thrower, but uh, more than capable in other events too. And a pretty well-rounded thrower. I believe he's probably throwing discus as well today, so you'll see a bit more of Jared, just a 22-year-old, uh, formerly trained, training with Terry Lomax here and, and now working with Kim Mickle, who's doing a wonderful job with her squad. A um, couple of really strong squads developed down in Christchurch and, and a really good bl blueprint for uh, throw success following on from some of those successful athletes uh, that we mentioned before, and, and it's wonderful to see some a meet here in our hometown, although it's probably not the, the best day that we could offer up um, to to have a meet with this, the calibre of athletes and certainly the number of athletes that we've got in the throws events uh, is exciting and testament to the work that those coaches and people have put in. Absolutely, as we see Liam and Chuck Wolf take to the ring, fresh from his personal best in the hammer. Was it a personal best for him in the hammer, was it? I believe it was. I don't have a official mark on me. I'll see if we can get this up. That's but great uh, news. She's out of, the, out of the stable with John Eden, based up there in South Auckland, and he's made the trip down here. So his previous personal best with the 7.26 kilogram was 51.58, and he went to 52.85. today. So Wonderful. Well done to him. I, I missed that one. He w and then he ducked off and ran over to the shot. So <laughs> he, uh, he's obviously done a great job today and off to a strong start as we see Tom step into the ring. Can't quite see on the footage there but it looks like it could have been a red flag. Yeah, no measurement there. Uh, just rotating out the front of the ring there and we'll take the red flag. As we see Nick Palmer, the young bull, steps in. like to see him tuck his shirt in personally you know, I'm a big fan of seeing that but uh, hey, you can't tell the youth these days how to do things but he's not too happy with that one either another red uh, flag yeah he's got 
far too much hair and far too much energy to be a seasoned shot putter. Uh, give him a few years. Updated uh, results through this round. Uh, Liam Nachok Wolf, who we saw come in before, 1463. Uh, got Joden competing too, which is one of our Masters athletes here, Joden Pratton, um, who's gone out to 1161 and fouls for Tom and Nick, respectively. Caitlin Dorr just taking her throw there, Paralympian from Tokyo. She's usually throwing around the uh, nine metre mark or so and has recently switched to rotation, um, which you don't see a lot in, in para shot putting. So that's just kind of ahead of the game there and applaud her for making a bold, bold change. Um, obviously different coordinative demands. <laughs> Working with uh, Hayden Hall and done a great job with Caitlin and, and her progress. Susanna Kennelly, 15-year-old, takes to the ring. Personal best in the season's best of 11.79 for Susanna. Currently sitting on 10.94 as her best throw of the day. She's sitting in sixth. Slightly behind Christina Ryan. And our current leader is Tapanisa Harvey at 14.05. A week out from Nationals Dale, uh, obviously will be a focus for a number of these athletes before they, some of them head overseas. Um, how important is this meet in the lead up in terms of sort of peaking and building towards that, that focus event and, and beyond? Yeah, so we've got a number of athletes here are sort of on uh, different time scales. So for many of them, Nationals will be the culmination of their season. And so therefore you would expect this, them to be using this as a final tune up before competition in Hawke's Bay next weekend. Uh, for some others, so for Tom, for example, he'll be going through until World Indoors, uh, which is in Serbia, uh, in about a month's time. So he's probably not as far through his uh, progressions as some of these others, w younger athletes will be, um, but I expect him to be rounding into form next week. I know for a fact that we are uh, going to see Jack O'Gill compete at Nationals next week too, so the men's shot will be... Uh, not that it's not strong here, but even stronger again next week. Unfortunately, the, without Ryan Ballantyne here uh, pushing the the top three in the men's shot, uh, we're going to have to just wait and see what the landscape unfolds like over the next few weeks. But certainly for those athletes who are fit and healthy and able to be here, you'd expect most of them to be reaching their peak uh, in the next within the next week. A great throw from Tapanisa there. She's gone over 15 metres. Uh, starting to really show her colours, which is up towards her personal best. Uh, she's knocking on the door of 16 metres, which I'd fully expect her to be able to tick off in the very near future. And one, two, who I assume would be having ambitions to qualify, if not already, for the World Junior Championships in Colombia later this year? Yeah, I, yeah, she'd be very capable. Uh, usually anything around... 16 plus with the 4kg shot would put you in the top eight and, and anything 17 plus you're starting to push towards medals so great progress for her and she's been around and finally great to see her finding her groove as a specialist it's always it's always tricky when athletes start to narrow their focus down to one event um, there's never really an optimal time to do it some people it comes down to personalities and what drives people motivation wise but for for her now she's seemingly stepped off the track and um, she dabbled with it quite a bit of netball and uh, was an accomplished player at St Andrews College and and now narrowing down as I said off to a, a Div One scholarship in the states as a shot putter which is fantastic so World Juniors and uh, the demands of NCAA would very likely be on the on the horizon for Tapanisa as we see Lexi Maples former heptathlete turned hammer thrower and also still doesn't mind rolling the arm over as a shot putter and occasionally a javelin thrower too so part of the, the stable down here uh, Lauren Bruce is, is Lexi's training partner and they know each other very well so they're uh, not only do they go head to head with the 4k ball on a string they go head to head with the 4k ball in the hand so it's um, the rivalry continues and there'll be plenty of little side bets out here I'd imagine too <laughs> 
That's what we like to see as Holly Robinson enters the ring. Of course, gold medalist in the javelin at the Paralympics in Tokyo last year. Tidy? Yeah, very tidy. Compact technique using the glide. Um, we talked about the rotation before. You see a lot of exponents now. and uh, The glide's still very effective, especially for those who uh, perhaps haven't got the amount of time to train for the event or would have other constraints maybe you know Holly's obviously a javelin thrower by trade so uh, for her to be able to pick up the shot and get some repeatability and consistency and stability in her technique uh, the glide's obviously the way to go it's young Cooper Killick yeah, he's a big big lad just overbalancing there and tipping out the front of the ring we've got uh, current up that Current update, Tapanisa leads the women's shot at 15.63. Uh, I believe that will be her fourth round throw. And Natalia rankin Chita in 13.95. Lauren Bruce at 12.66 for third. Attempts there by Jared Neighbours, 21-year-old. Part of the Christchurch Old Boys Club. through this comp at a fair old pace now and you can see some athletes start to peel off a few of these guys will be throwing discus as well starting to warm up in the background for anyone out there who hasn't perhaps seen a, a shot put competition and and might want to learn a little bit more you can get down to your local athletics club and uh, it's one of the beautiful things about this event is it's it's really easy to learn very easy to get started very difficult to master so the principles are pretty simple. You, the ball's the same weight, the circle's the same size, <laughs> the stop board's the same height, the tape's the same length, and those rules don't really change. But uh, the nuance of it and the subtleties as you start to progress through the ranks, you, most people we should be able to, with a little bit of training and um, perhaps a little bit of direction, get up to, to double digits, 10 metres or so, and um, it gets exponentially harder from there. A bit like golf for anyone who's ever dabbled. You can kind of... <laughs> Get be a hacker. You, you can be a hacker and then you start <laughs> to get bat on ball and you figure out how to nudge it around into the hole and then go, oh, this is all right. But then getting from there to the levels that some of these athletes, Tom himself has, uh, yeah, speaking has achieved of, yeah. Yeah, as he steps into the ring here. Being big ain't easy. Uh, New clothing not. label. <laughs> apparently not. sound effects probably tell the story there for us uh, not too happy with that one what are you what are you seeing there from a technique or a, a very technical perspective Dale is there something just in the rotation or the release that he's not quite happy with or perhaps well, the balance I've got to be a little careful with what I say <laughs> here. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously biased um, you know having having coached Tom for seven or eight years and uh, I see things with my eyes in that throw that I probably would address but um, yeah, he's. I don't have the full full context now of what he's working on and what his uh, what his intentions are, technically, uh, or what he what his feel is. Certainly, one thing I do do know for Tom is that he'll be looking. He wants freedom in his throw, and freedom is a is a concept or a word that makes sense to him around his best throws uh, being loose and relaxed, and that they're, they're not bits. They're it's it's not chunks of a throw or parts of a throw. It's just one languid flowing movement um, and he'll certainly be looking for that today uh, and when he's at his best that that's a pretty consistent theme that you know in the time we had together it was something we sort of pri prided ourselves on being able to find and yeah again I, I am biased with my technical views on those things 2071 is the result there for Tom so far um, 20.71 as we cross over Max Atwell I think this is warming up in the discus here ready to get underway. We've got a mixed discus as well. Should be pretty good conditions for the discus throwers. Uh, here we've got, whilst the, the hammer throwers and probably the shot putters less so, that not too keen on a headwind, uh, the discus throwers will quite like it. If you can get a good flight on the implement and fizz it into the headwind, you do get some lift on the implement 
and quite a bit of carry, especially with the, the women throwing the 1kg discus. If you can pierce it into that stiff headwind, uh, we could see some of these girls who have been around the low 50s, 52, 53 metres, uh, every chance one of them pops over 55, which would be, it'd be wonderful. And there's quite a few girls in that mix who are ready for a breakthrough. Indeed, just looking at some of the personal best and season's bests of our women's discus field and Tapanisa who's in the shot put as well of 53.16 and Tatiana Komoana 54.48 see Lauren as well has a personal best of 54.56 so there's four in, in include Natalia Rankin Shatar as well four athletes who have gone over 50 meters as you say could have a real contest on our hands. For yeah, they're uh, tightly packed. It's um, I think there's a number of number of these women who are I do think capable of quite a big breakthrough if they can get hold of one today. And uh, leading into the national champs next week will be be hotly contested again. We add in a few of the North Islanders who who aren't here, uh, also around that low to mid 50 meter range. Uh, I think what we're going to see today is quite a big dichotomy of throws. So there'll be some that are. Uh, perhaps don't catch the wind and you'll see the discus just gets turned over and uh, <laughs> tombstones into the ground, basically just flies vertically, which isn't aerodynamically friendly and uh, certainly isn't going to go very far. But when you when they do catch one, if they can get the spin rate right and, and the angle of release right so that it pierces into the breeze, then kind of get a, a much longer, nice flight and it'll be a... That's a nice flight there. Fantastic. That's, that's kind of the thing we're looking for. Susanna Kinnelly, the 15-year-old. Well done, Susanna. Lovely, nice, relaxed technique. They're actually into the first round here, which is good. And as soon as we get any distances through, we'll be sure to keep you posted. But she'll be looking to improve on her personal best of 47.29. Nice, relaxed, long discus path. Shoulders are relaxed. Brings the discus around on a nice wide orbit. Hits a good position at the front of the ring and a big long pull to finish. Beautiful technique from this young lady. Quite a natural flow to it. So we're looking at, at rhythm and posture for those who perhaps haven't watched a lot of discus before or a lot of throws events. They're, they're two things you can look for. Posture being what are, what are the shapes that these athletes are making? Are they sort of closed off and tight with their body? Uh, or are they long and smooth, long and smooth being optimal and then rhythm being the second part is how quickly can we connect those movements to achieve the maximum velocity on the implement at the point of release um, speed of release is, is the name of the game while ang angle and height do have something to do with it can't do a whole lot about height of release without changing what what you're born with but uh, angle and angle and speed especially speed is going to be the thing that um, we're looking for it's Abby Moody there, 17 year old out of South Canterbury with her first throw as Zana Beatty takes to the ring. Out of Tyree. Personal best of 47.11. Couple of strong squads based out of Dunedin. A little bit too high there on the angle, we mentioned that before, and you should just see the the wind's just going to flip that one straight back at her and we see the red flag up on that. Looks like we've got Natalia Rankin Chitar locked and loaded. Getting through these throws nice and quickly, which is what we want. The athletes generally like a quick competition. Um, allows you to get a bit of rhythm going on between rounds and sequence some throws together. Especially in these conditions, they'll be they'll be ready to go. And there is a a bit of a thrower's etiquette if a, if a throw, especially in the later rounds of a competition, if a throw isn't great, that they'll often just walk out the front of the ring deliberately if it's not their best throw or it's not close to, and that speeds up the competition a little bit too. Um, you don't have to. You're always entitled to get your throw measured, but it's a it's a win-win for everyone if we can if we can keep these competitions ticking along at a reasonable rhythm. Natalia's throw there looked like a legal throw. White flags up. As I said, as soon as we get any results, we'll get back to you on these and feed them back down. Do we usually see for these athletes who have competed in multiple events that 
by the time they are through to the likes of the discus that it can be their, their best throw can even be their first throw is it a sort of a case by case basis yeah quite possibly I, I think they'll without a lot of uh, specialist throwers in this I mean we've got a lot of throwers who are competing in multiple events but very few actual discus throwers or specialist discus throwers. Tatiana uh, Kamoana is, is probably the specialist discus thrower of the field. Um, so I'd expect her to be pretty strong across every one of her attempts. Uh, as we see, Lauren there looks like a foul out left of sector. Um, yeah, for some of the other ones, I'd say they've probably even passed on their later rounds in the shot and come over to, to get involved in this one. But being the final throw of the day on the program. You'll see them take all six, but certainly the effects of a, a big day out on the field might start to take their toll, and uh, we'll have to wait and see. It, it only takes one. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's a funny old game. You can have often have five fouls, and you just stumble, on a, stumble into one throw and fall into a position. Maybe you just relax, as we see. Tapanisa there, not quite catching it out of the hand, and... Butterflying one out. Good work by the officials to run in and get hold of that one. These slow motion shots provided to us. Here's Lauren Bruce on screen at the moment. Really just shows the full weight of momentum and speed effort put into these throws. Nice whack in the face there with the, <laughs> with the ponytail as well. I'd say the uh, looking at that one, probably looking at get a little bit more relaxation through her shoulders, a um, little bit, take a bit of that tension out and create some space between her shoulders and her ears there would be nice to keep the axis of rotation a bit purer and maybe a little bit more efficient as we see Tatiana step into the ring, 54-48 only recently within the last couple of weeks, clips the net on the way out but a nice flight, that's what we're looking for. Yeah, unfortunately the catching the net there is going to cost her quite a bit of distance uh, but if she can just turn that over down the middle of sector not a bad starting throw shearing off it a little bit shearing off it meaning she's going left as the discus is going right on the delivery you can see her spinning off to the left there so you can tidy up that axis on her next throw she'll be certainly looking to go well into the 50 meter plus territory Twenty point seven one. Nick Palmer eighteen oh nine in second. Liam and Chuck Wolf fourteen sixty three in third. Jared Neighbors thirteen oh four in fourth. Cooper Killick, the seventeen year old, first time with the seven point two six shot uh, to twelve forty three. So uh, he looked pretty happy with that. And Joden Pratt in the the master eleven eight five. So some some fairly good throws. And we see Joden Pratt in there. He's running between the shot and the discus. <laughs> the big fella coached by my son Quinn Motley and he is after a 40 metre throw he's that's his goal for the season he's he's got out to 39 high uh, so he's looking to to get through to to 40 metres in that uh, Joden's a late starter to athletics he's got four teenage daughters who all compete and uh, he decided that rather than watching he was going to get <laughs> into it so he's he started doing shot and discus and uh, he's always there helping out uh, fantastic 40 before 40 maybe yeah, he's definitely, that's his thing. He wants to throw 40 metres. He's, he's a big, strong man, and uh, his, his technique is slowly improving, even though he's yeah, really only started it at the age of 38. So doing fantastically. Brilliant stuff as we see Tom Walsh potentially picturing what he wants to achieve here in the shots, and it's Nick, Nick Palmer. Palmer. There. got the white leg. Tom wearing his uh, one of his Walsh shot uh, t-shirts <laughs> so uh, being big being this big ain't easy so uh, I think you can get them from Scotty Browns if you're, you're keen on some of those t-shirts he's got some pretty fantastic ones that uh, that uh, that are, have got a cult following now. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think I saw one something to do with um no, no running for me or something like that, which is probably where I sit on things. It's Tom. He's getting plenty of power behind him. He's just wanting to get a little bit more direct out the middle there. 
not entirely happy. We're not too far away either, Craig, from the next event on the track. About six or so minutes away from the women's 200 metres. Brought to you by the Christchurch City Council. And we have a field of eight runners. So that we will bring to you in about five or six minutes time though, as we stick with the shot and it is Caitlin Dorr. As Dale Stevenson was mentioning earlier, a bit of a pioneer in the ambulatory open sense in terms of the rotation on the shot for Caitlin there. take a look back at the discus both these throwing events that's uh that's diana beatty the older of the beatty sisters into the circle there you've been out there craig's wind dying down at all still still pretty blustery well i don't think it's as bad as it was before but it's certainly right up there um it it'll actually be very good for the 200 they're going to have you know they're going to run fast the times won't quite be legal but uh, as we go they'll um, we'll see how they go so here's Zana Beatty again absolutely and like you said a bit earlier in our coverage I think when the likes of say Eddie or some other overseas athletes see these times on <laughs> social media they might uh, send a warning shot for things further to come certainly encouraging for the confidence levels I imagine yeah well know. the sprinters know that it's a you know they had a strong tailwind but that the point is that they've done that time they know their body's capable of running that fast so it does give them a big boost um, I think you will have seen some interviews with Zoe Hobbs when she ran under the New Zealand record but it was slightly windy and she said that gave her a great deal of confidence mm. like my legs can actually go that fast if I get the right conditions and sure enough 10 or 12 days later she breaks the New Zealand record and certainly, you know, Nationals is Hastings next week, which is, is known as a fast track. The predominant wind is a, is a slight tail down the home straight, so very good for sprinters. Lauren Bruce racing over from the shot to the discus. Yep, her third Already event of the afternoon. Oh, you can see the wind catching that at the end. Uh, possibly got a little bit high there. And looks like it's fallen just inside the sector. Yep, we've got the white flag. You see the throwing right into that southerly at the moment quite get the even release on that one as you see it's caught <laughs> almost straight away Tapanisa Javier into the circle uh, Tap's a very talented junior she's already qualified in the shot put and the discus for the world juniors in Colombia and uh, she is heading off to the University of Arizona Arizona Wildcats one of the best track and field teams in the US um, She'll be heading there for to further her studies later this year. So her first throw, she uh, got a bit too much grip on the circle and said it's spinning the wrong way on the disc. But that's much better. That's been brought down by the wind, but certainly that's really that white flag there. That'll be getting out close to that 50 meter mark, I would think. We await some official marks there from the discus. We'll update you as soon as they come to hand. But first, we'll stick with the discus and Tatiana Komoana. Tatiana was out to 46.52 in the first round. So she'll be looking to go a bit further than that. She's been thrown into the 50s most of the season so far. Oh, and she, wow, she really got a hold of that one. That, that's a decent throw. Definitely searching towards that 50 metre mark. 
Tatiana, resident uh, down here in Christchurch, coach, coached by Kim Mickle, uh, but proudly representing Te Araha, <laughs> where she's from originally. And uh, looks like we've got the first of the, the men coming in next. That's Kieran Fowler, another one representing the Tyree Club. Very strong throws down there with uh, Railing Bates. Kieran Fowler, originally from Geraldine. A hell of uh, decathlete originally and uh, went away from the sport for a little while and now uh, his early 30s he's come back as his, uh, his children are starting to compete first up throw there for Kieran personal best set back in 2010 but now it is time for the women's 200 metres brought to you by the Christchurch City Council. This is our last event in session A. So you can see the athletes are uh, all lined up there. Looks like we've uh, had one scratching, which is Amy Robertson in lane nine, who uh, looked like she injured her hamstring earlier in the 100 metre hurdles. But from the inside out, we've got Maddie Wilson in lane two. Uh, looking for the action in the middle of the track as they go down into their blocks. Anna Percy in lane four, Rosie Elliott in five, and uh, Georgia Hulls in six. Jordan Blake outside her in seven, and the junior Jess Vogel out of South Canterbury in lane eight. Watching the middle of the track to start off. So just standing up, just a little bit of wobble in the wind there. Georgia Hulls just stepping up a fraction. So Maddie Wilson, Julia Burnham, Anna Percy, very fast starter, Rosie Elliott and Georgia Hulse who have been the fastest two women over 200 metres in New Zealand for the last couple of years, taking out first and second. Uh, they've had a lot of headwinds racing over the last few weeks so they'll be looking forward to this tailwind you can see the flag still blowing so they'll have a bit of a crosswind for this first 50 meters and then they'll feel the wind behind them and look for them to be absolutely flying down the home straight jordan blake in lane seven 200 400 runner and jess vogel from south canterbury in lane eight national woman 18 eight uh heptathlon champion but also very good 200 meter and 400 meter runner. A little slight bias in my half, I do coach Jess. So <laughs> That's okay. Watching those three in the middle of the track Anna Percy, Rosie Elliott, Georgia Hulls. Their way first time, or second time really. And Georgia Hulse showing out early. Rosie Elliott right on her shoulder, though, and Anna Percy's there as well. Jordan Blake staying with them. Jess Vogel and Julia Burnham on the outside. And Georgia is a strong finisher, and she leads into the straight. Rosie Elliott's powering there, though. Both of them driving home. Anna Percy coming there as well. Very close. Looks like Rosie. Oh, no, that's going to be a photo for first. Jordan Blake coming through. That was very, very close. We will await and see what happened there. And it it's... Looked like Rosie Elliott slipped into the lead, but Georgia might have just dipped her. And as we expected to, it seemed quick. With that tailwind, we've got a slightly less than official stopwatch here, but potentially around that. It looked like it could be yeah, mark. low twenty, low twenty threes for sure. So Georgia's looking around. She'll be looking to see what the wind was and the time. We're not, no, still not sure who won that. It was very, very close. It's almost as expected. There was three runners there, and Anna Percy, Rosie Elliott, and Georgia Hulls of it all on sub-24. Yeah, so much action up the front. I miss uh, Anna Percy held on for third. I, I'm not sure who got fourth in the end. Might have been Jordan Blake. And then looked like uh, Jessica Vogel, Julia Burnham, and Maddie Wilson. But we 
we'll wait to see what we get from those guys. We'll go back to the discus briefly as we await those official times and we'll have the thoughts of the 200 metre winner with Sarah Carly Ross shortly. That was the throw there from Susanna Kennelly, but we're going to go to Sarah Carly Ross who has the winner of the women's 200 metres. I'm here with the winner of the women's 200 metres, Georgia Hells. Wow, that was a fast race. 22.98 I saw on the screen, unofficial. How did it feel out there? Yeah, pretty windy, pretty good, but it was an amazing race. And to have Rosie there the whole way, it was a great race and it shows what there is. There's more there in the future. Great to see Rosie Elliott out here running so well this season. And you two are, going, are having some great battles out there as well. What's, what did your programme look like for Nationals next week? Um, at the moment, in the one, two, and I think it's four by four, but we'll sort of have a review coming into the week. It's definitely going to be less busy than Rosie's. <laughs> yeah, she uh, really is going to have a big program next week with the 400 potentially as well. Let's talk about this year, Georgia, because you're right on the cusp of some of the world ranking points uh, for the World Championships in Oregon. How important was it for you to come out here today on a World Athletics Continental Tour meet and get these valuable points today with a quick time. Yeah, no, it's really important. It's nice to have a hit out before nationals as well, when we can look forward to Hastings and hopefully some good legal conditions. Well, let's hope for some nice legal wins next weekend. It was a bit blustery out there today, but take the time. You know now your legs can run that fast, and I'm sure you'll be looking forward to being in your hometown as well. Yeah, of course. I love being there. My mum and dad are helping out, volunteering, so are some friends, so we have some familiar faces. Right, well, go and get warm. <laughs> Your number's flapping away. We'll see you next weekend. Congratulations, Georgia Howells, winner of the women's 200 metres today at the ITM 22. Back to you guys in the commentary box. Kelly Ross and, yes, the women's 200 metre results. So there's a slight uh, tweak we'll need there for number one. It was Georgia Hulls in a time of 23.01, but just two hundredths of a second, Craig Motley. Not much at all, two hundredths of a second. So yeah, Georgia 23.01, Rosie 23.03, Anna Percy under the 24 second barrier with 23.82. And then good times from Jordan Blake 24.74 and Jessica Vogel 25.33, Julia Burnham 25.40 and Maddie Wilson who's had a pretty busy day, yeah. uh, the heptathlete. Uh, it'll be a good lead in for her um, for doing the heptathlon at nationals next week, because the the senior women's heptathlons combined with the uh, with the national championships. So uh, yeah, twenty six nineteen for Maddie. So good times all round. Plus three point eight win though. Was well so going to acknowledge yeah. that it is important to to factor that in. Uh, was a, a quicker time than the meet record, which was set at QE two by Monique Williams back in two thousand nine. That was twenty three point two six. But that will stand given the wind advantage here for the sprinters this afternoon as we go back to the discus ring to round out session one here of the international track meet in Christchurch at Napunawai Craig Motley has vacated his seat and we welcome back in Dale Stevenson how have things been going out uh, in the discus ring well I just ducked my head out and there's plenty going on out there athletes running back and forth between the shot and the discus to get their attempts in and uh, we mentioned prior to the comp starting that there was a, a pretty favourable wind, if, especially if one of the ladies could get hold of a nice throw, and exactly that's happened. Tatiana Kamalan has gone out to 55.70, uh, I believe, on her second throw of the day. So she had a nice one on her first round that clipped the net, and she made the adjustments needed into her second round, and is already clocked a new PB as we see Tapanisa brush the net on the way out there. Yeah, uh, that's has clocked a, a new PB to go first time over 55 metres and off to a really strong start. Can't ask for much more than that. Yes, her last PB in season's best was 54.48, so to improve that by... 55.79 yeah, was her second Over round. a metre, yeah. so fantastic to see for Tatiana. And Tapanisa's gone 50 metres 63 uh, so far. See her in the ring, a replay of her third round here. Just a little early on release and catching that gate as
Tatiana steps in looking to back up and build on her 55 metre effort. You can see she's got that nice piercing flight there, but shearing off that one a little bit, not quite catching it as cleanly. Won't improve on her best throw so far. She's worked really hard, battled some back injuries and uh, got herself back working through studies and um, managing to, she's a studying radiology and is approaching her full qualification there here in Christchurch, originally out of Waikato and managing to supplement that with her, her training regime and, and paying dividends today. So congratulations to Tatiana, let's hope she can build on it in the remaining uh, rounds. The World Junior Qualification Standard uh, for the Women's Discus is 48.50. So a qualifier there defi definitely for Tapanisa. And, uh, and for Tatiana. Will add to yeah. uh, I'm not sure if Tatiana's eligible. Oh, uh, of course. Yeah, one. 21. Yeah, 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 she's yeah. 21. So that wouldn't, wouldn't apply to her. But um, yeah, certainly World University Games, which unfortunately uh, we're not sending a team to this year. She would, she'll be in the mix for that too and she'll be moving up the New Zealand rankings with plenty more opportunities to to wear that black signet as we move into the last couple of throws of the shot here. Nick Palmer showing some acrobatics. <laughs> Pretty impressive there. Uh, unfortunately, doesn't make the ball go any further so he'll get the red flag and not improve on uh, his best throw of the day there. I believe he's still sitting uh, around 18 metres, 18.08 from last time on last one I caught and for the final throw of the men's shot into the ring Tom Walsh <coughs> and he steps out on that one there looks like he'll finish the day with his best throw of 20 meters 71 watching the replay here Be testing out some new shoes today size of the day 13, 14? No, I think Tom's about a 12 and a half, 13, yeah. depending <laughs> on the shoes. Um, 12 and a half, too big. I never got the hand-me-downs, you know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, he's, I'm sure he's got a good, reasonable stockpile of, of wheels he can dig into there. Um, and can confirm Nick Palmer was in second place on 18.09. So, a full day's work for these guys. Third place in the men's shot went to Liam Chockwolf at 14.85. Uh, good, consistent day out. And then a tight battle. We mentioned that battle between Jared Neighbours and Cooper Killick. I don't know who will be shouting the coffees there, but uh, Jared's taken the chocolates at 13.04 to Cooper Killick. Uh, nine centimetres behind at 12.95. So a tight contest there between Jared and Cooper. Uh, Joden Pratton at 12.04 in sixth place. So that's the full rundown on the men's shot as they pack up the tail end of, of session A here. Maybe a few throws remaining in the discus, but otherwise we can uh, we can put a fork in uh, in session A. And I think uh, it'll be good to get some insights shortly through Sarah Cowley-Ross from Tom Walsh as he builds towards a big season, which as you alluded to earlier, Dale includes the world indoors next month. Next in month, national Serbia. championships next week yep. uh, up in Hawke's Bay. So, yeah, plenty to look forward to and um, we'll see if we can hear from him now. Absolutely. It'll be a big year and we, we know, you know, we've had some big throws from Ryan Krauser, from Joe Kovacs, so they're the leading guys. But we'll let's hear he from Tom to with Sarah Kelly ross with the winner of the men's shot put at the ITM 22 Olympic bronze medalist, Tom Walsh. What was the rating for today's performance? Oh, I think probably, I'd say a six out of 10 maybe. Um, yeah, I felt in a few of the throws I moved pretty well. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was actually, it wasn't all bad for sure. I obviously wanted to throw a little bit further, but you always learn things from every competition you're always in. So yeah, it wasn't, wasn't all bad news. 
Okay, well, six out of ten. Uh, my children have bought some lollies for you, so there you go, courtesy of Max and Pops and my cameraman Adam here today. Now, well, my mother told me you to trust someone who bribes you with lollies, so uh, I'm not sure what, what are these lace worth, Sarah? Caramel, she's my friend, she's all right, it's fine. Uh, right, so ITM today, next week Nationals, yeah. and then a day after that, you're off. Off to, off to the big show, World and Doors, so uh, there to, to get my third title in a row. So uh, body's in really good nick at the moment. I'm really happy with where things are at. Technically, things have just got to come together a little bit, just timing-wise. Uh, things are a little bit off at the moment, but it always happens to me every year. So uh, I feel like I can get it sorted in the next, uh, you know. It, could, it, only, it only takes one throw or one session, so uh, it's just around the corner. That's right, and for you, in terms of putting it together, what sort of things are you going to be working on or is it a, a, a mental game that you need to just click into place uh, in the lead up to Belgrave? I guess the big thing is uh, not to try too much because as soon as I start trying and trying to hit positions or trying to you know, muscle it or something like that, it never goes well for me. So uh, just continuously, even though it, as frustrating as it can be to figure out that timing, just you know, got to let it go. Got to let it go. A wise man once told me that. <laughs> A very wise man. Hey, how much are you looking forward to getting over to your major championship, two world indoors in Belgrade in Serbia? I know you love the big show. Uh, what's it like lining up against the big boys of World Shot Put? Oh, look, there's nothing else like it. Um, it's it's the thing that gets me out of bed every morning uh, on cold days, warm days, you know, whatever when you're hurting. Uh, it's the thing that kind of you know keeps me going. So um, it's something I pride myself on is always showing up uh, in the shape to win. Uh, and I think I've proven that over the last five or six years and um, most of the time I've got pretty close if not done it. So uh, that's the goal again this time around. And you've got a new team now, Hayden Hall. He's now taken over your coaching. How's that going with Hayden? Terrible. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's going all right. It's going all right. Uh, like any new relationship, it takes a while to find your feet. Uh, you know, there's always a honeymoon phase too. He can do no wrong. I can do no wrong. Uh, clearly, I'm, I can never do anything wrong anyway. But uh, no, it's all, it's all good. It's all uh, good. In its infancy, but it's, I think it's going to be good. Well, we're excited for the year ahead for you, Tom. Now, I know you've got a message for your partner, Dana. Uh, she's watching on the live stream, I believe, right now. Mm. Uh, what do you need when you get home for her to be turning on right now? <laughs> Turn that sauna on, please. It's uh, a little bit chilly out here, just a little bit. <laughs> Well, the sauna will be good, great for recovery. We're really looking forward to seeing you in action at the Track and Field Nationals next week. And we know it's a big year for you, World Indoors, World Outdoors and Commonwealth Games. Just a final word, how great is it that you're able to get back to New Zealand in between those times? Oh, it's amazing. I think uh, I've spoken a lot about MIQ and, and things like that. And it's just amazing that now not only sports people, but all of New Zealanders who need to be come home for different reasons uh, can actually come home. And I think everyone deserves that. Yes, they do. Right. Well, the winner of the men's shot put today, none other than Tom Walsh, Olympic bronze medalist from Tokyo, Olympic bronze medalist from Rio, former world champion, current world indoor champion. And he's off to the big show very soon. Back to you guys in the commentary box. Thanks very much, Sarah. Yes, the thoughts there of Tom Walsh, who produced a 20.71 metre effort in the shot put this afternoon. Big events ahead. Of course, he'll head, as you heard there, to Hastings next week, but the World Indoor Shot in Belgrade next month, and then the likes of the uh, World Outdoor Championships and the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham to come. And uh, I'm sure Tom... We'll be looking, you know, his, his personal best in Doha back in 2019 of 22.9 metres. He'll be wanting and very determined to be hitting that type of distance in the coming months. But for now, we look ahead to towards the end of the session. Actually, in fact, the discus is still we're in its sort of later stages as Craig, Craig Motley rejoins us here in the commentary box and Jared Neighbours with one of his final throws in the discus that one again as we're seeing quite a bit getting caught in that southerly but uh, the white flag goes up so they will measure that one for Jared there's a great tussle going on in that uh, in that discus Jade Zaya from Tyree the top one another one of these Amazing Tyree throwers <laughs> is uh, in the lead with 46.23 metres, which she hit in the uh, second round. 
and Kieran Fowler 43.17 metres in second with Jared Neighbours very close behind them on 40.97 so a bit of a three way battle there for the top three places Max Atwell's a little bit further back with the 34.22 and Joden Pratton who we saw earlier just uh, hitting the net a few times so he's yet to register a throw here's Kieran Fowler now oh he's just lost his balance out the front seen a bit of that haven't we this afternoon Craig throwers losing their footing both in the hammer and discus out to the left but at the same time too in the women's discus we have seen a personal best throw in excess of 55 metres with Tatiana Kaumoana but I believe we have another interview with Sarah Cowley Ross and I think she's got Lauren Bruce. Sarah. I'm here with the winner of the Women's Hammer, Olympian Lauren Bruce. She's also competed in the discus and shot put today. She did a very busy day. Lauren, give us your rating out of, out of 10 for all your events today. Uh, I think it's pretty clear from today that I should leave discus well in the past. <laughs> it was pretty atrocious. Um, Shot put went okay, it was just shy of the PB that I did at Cook's Classic and Hammer I threw uh, 65 which was okay, we were thrown into a pretty strong headwind and I was thrown out the back which has a tail and they were going reasonably fast so it was kind of kind of a shame but yeah we got um, some things that we needed out of the comps today so yeah. What were you specifically looking out of, out of the comps for you today? Uh, we just wanted to get the ball moving around, um, I've been getting quite fully on the ball in the circle uh, so we're managing to do that um, just needed to add some expression on it which I didn't quite have today but we'll, we'll sort that out this week and be ready to go come nationals next weekend and you have you've got a big year ahead of you uh, last year was huge for you off to, uh, as a now Olympian also you got back the New Zealand record you and Julia Ratcliffe had a great tussle exchanging that over a few months in, in the lead up to Tokyo what's ahead for you in terms of your international calendar yeah, so I'm going to be heading over to Melbourne in mid-March. Um, Dale's moving over there and I'm going to continue working with him there until we head to Europe in May. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll get a, co a couple of high-level comps over there and hopefully be back for Oceania's in Oz. And then World Champs, I've still got to get an auto-qualify for that, which is not an ideal position to be sitting in right now, but that will come. And then we've got Com Games pretty, sh uh, pretty soon after that, which, yeah, exciting, pretty jam-packed year jam-packed all right but uh, this is why you do it to compete and to compete for New Zealand how how great was that experience at Tokyo for you preparing you for major championships down the track yeah I guess like the whole time that we spent over there we spent three months away offshore um, obviously we couldn't get back into New Zealand and come and go like in other years so yeah just being able to go in and prepare competing against the best girls in the world was a pretty crazy experience and show that I can hold my own against them. Um, obviously Tokyo itself was a disappointing um, yeah, distance wise. I threw well off my PB and well off what I've been capable of, but it kind of set a fire to go back and do it again. And um, yeah, really proved to myself that I felt like I belonged out there on the world stage with those girls. Now next week is the national championships. Can we see you lining up in all three throws again? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. I'm just doing the hammer. I have a um, national title to get, I haven't got one yet. Um, I feel like I should have that. I've been to the Olympics now. I, I'm the New Zealand record holder, Oceania record holder, don't have a New Zealand title. So we've got to check that one off. So all focus is on doing that next weekend. Well, we are looking forward to seeing you at the Mitre 10 Sports Park in Hawke's Bay next weekend in the Women's Hammer. Congratulations on being out here today, three events, and we look forward to seeing more out of you as you build into your international season. Lauren Bruce. Let's head back to you guys in the current tree box. Thank you very much, Sarah. Use the thoughts there of Lauren Bruce as we have a look at those shot put results from earlier in the afternoon. And Lauren, after winning the hammer throw as we expected, coming third in the shot, Tapanisa Javier there with a throw of 15.63. Natalia Rankin Shita with a 14.10. And Holly Robinson, too, let's not forget. Paralympic gold medalist in Tokyo in the javelin. Dale Stevenson was mentioning earlier in our coverage that there isn't the javelin there at uh, the Commonwealth Games or the Paralympic Games in uh, Birmingham, but there is uh, the shot put. So a, a focus for, for her, Craig Motley, as we look at those results. Uh, yeah, the, uh, 
encouraging results for a number of athletes there. Yeah, another world junior qualifier for Tefanisa Javier as well. So she's solidified her credentials for the world juniors with uh, qualifying distances in the shot put and the discus today. So that's a pretty fantastic day out for her. And uh, Natalia just 40 centimetres off the uh, qualifying. So be a bit of competition for spots in that world junior team. You know, so there's another couple of throwers that aren't here that are right up there as well. Absolutely. That that plane's starting to get more fuller and fuller off to uh, Colombia as we as we round out our domestic season on the track and field here in New Zealand with the international track meet at Napunawai next week, of course, the track and field national championships in Hastings. As we cross back now to the coverage the last Max Atwell few the throws discus. of the discus, Max Atwell. Plenty still to come here from Napunawai later this afternoon. Jared, oh. have Jared neighbours into the circle. So his, his last throw. Oh, and he's got hold of that one. I think he'll be pretty pleased with that. He's certainly uh, got a chance to challenge for one of the top three places currently sitting in third with 41 22 we'll just wait to see if that one is any further than that absolutely we've got the men's and women's triple jump coming up in about 40 minutes time the men's high jump with Christchurch's own Hamish Kerr looking to improve on his personal best of 2.31 meters which is of course a national record the 200 meter men's sprint at quarter past six with Tian Welpton leading the charge. And to conclude our f events here this evening, the women's 800 meters at 25 past six and the men's 800 at 20 to seven. Karen Fowler there, the white flag managed to keep his balance. Looked like he was gonna tumble out for a second there. Kicked himself in. Bit of acrobatics, in the words of Dale Stevenson. <laughs> He's waiting anxiously for the, the distance to come back. He said very good competition for the top three places there. Currently, Jade Zaya leaves with 46.23. And here's Jade coming in for his last round. He's got a personal best of 47 point, uh, sorry, season's best of 47.21 metres. So he'll be looking to get out close to that. Very good in those windy conditions. his footing there Jades oh he celebrated that one we see out the back of the nets as he <laughs> runs over to his coaches I think waits the official distance to come through to us here in the commentary box. This looks like the last of our female competitors of the last round of throws with Zana Beatty from Tyree. Currently sitting in fourth with 44.62 metres and she's just caught the edge of the discus there and I think yes she will have stepped, stepped over. out the front. Mm -hmm. yep. Red flag on that. Well, in the interim, we are going to cross back to Sarah Kelly Ross, who I believe has our Paralympic Tokyo gold medalist, Holly Robinson. I'm here with the Paralympic champion, Holly Robinson, the shot put today. Now, I... A few technical difficulties, unfortunately, with the internet coverage but hopefully we can come back to Sarah and Holly in a short while as we go back to the women's discus
just updating the men's discus. So that final round, those were two huge throws from Kieran Fowler and Jade Zaya. So Kieran Fowler out to 50.76 metres, which is a lifetime best, yeah. beating his time from uh, several years ago. And then in the last round, the very last throw, Jade Zaya also out over 50 metres for the first time, uh, for the second time, 50.66 metres. So a PB for him, and only 10 centimetres between them for first and second. So fantastic. I imagine they'll both be pretty happy with that. And Tafanisa Javier is just let rip with that one as well. And that looks like it's out close to that 50 metre sort of mark as well. We'll wait. Well, to you see. could definitely you could definitely tell after Jade stepped out of the in a ring there. There's a bit of yahooing and carrying on. I could even hear it from further down the track. Jar Jared Neighbours in that final round also out to a personal best, 46.18 metres. Well, as Dale Stevenson mentioned a few moments ago in our coverage, while the wind is playing havoc a little bit with some of our athletes and the discus, it can actually bear some fruit. But we are going to go back to Sarah Carly ross now, who's standing by with Holly Robinson. Well, I'm here with Tokyo Paralympic javelin champion Holly Robinson. Now, she's been competing actually in the shot put today, which is great. Now, Holly, has the shot put been added to the program for Paris for your category? Yeah, so it has. I uh, was just notified a couple of months ago that shot put has been added for my classification for the next Paralympics, which is really exciting. We only had on offer one field event before that, so we have a chance at um, doing both now. So that's pretty exciting. And were you happy with the shot put today? Oh, not particularly. Um, it's definitely a work in progress. <laughs> but it's been really nice to try and focus on something new. And, and you know, I used to do it when I was young, but I haven't done it for a number of years. So it's really nice to sort of start from the beginning and start to learn as, I guess, a newbie athlete. Must be quite refreshing after the, all these years of doing javelin, have something new. Unfortunately, yes, there our uh, interview was disrupted again by some tech issues. But uh, yeah, fascinating for Holly. As she said, she feels like a bit of a novice again uh, in the shot. And we look forward to seeing what she can produce. It was one of the highlights for me of the Paralympics in Tokyo last year, seeing her win gold in the javelin. Uh, and we wish her all the best in her endeavours in the shot. Just going back to that discus, the last round, uh, we, we missed the throw, but uh, Tatiana Kamuana extended her personal best once more, this time out to 56.51 metres. So very, very happy thrower there, I think. She's added um, from 54 up to 55.5 and, and now up to 56.5 on the last. So uh, great throwing from Tatiana. And... Um, Tafanisa Javier, like I said, looked like it was about 50 metres, 50-48, so I'll, uh, I'll take the pick on that one. <laughs> so she's got two out over 50 as well. And that's just a replay of uh, Kieran Fowler's last round where he threw a massive personal best of uh, over 50 metres, his first time over 50, and uh, he'll be wrapped with that, I think. Just having a look at a note here, Craig, Kieran's personal best was set back in 2010. 12 years ago, he would have been 20. And here he is at 32, clearing 50 metres for the first time. I think the Bears will be uh, flowing maybe a little uh, bit later uh, this I'm afternoon. I'm sure they will be. And uh, look, Kieran, another one out of the Tyree Club, but uh, he also was trained, uh, so formerly from Geraldine, when he was a, a decathlete as a junior, and trained by Ian Beard, the, the uh, very well-known Timaru coach, who obviously has had a hand in a number of our top athletes, Tom Walsh, uh, Lauren Bruce were both coached by Ian in their in their formative years, and so was Kieran Fowler. And he's he's had a couple of sessions with Ian. Um, my son and daughter both train with Ian as well, and and Kieran's come along to a couple of sessions when he's been travelling through Timaru for a bit of technical advice, and and obviously that you know Tyree club, uh, most of them coached by Raylene Bates. They've had a fantastic competition today, plenty of very good throws. So they'll all be. He'll be very happy going into nationals, throwing personal bests in, in these conditions a week out. He'll be pretty excited about what they can do next week. Absolutely. Yep, the discus has certainly delivered here at Napunawa in the International Track Meet 2022 edition. I believe 
There's a slight break now in proceedings. We'll have a wee look at the session B. Actually, Craig Motley is signalling some results. He'd like to <laughs> tell the public, so go on, Craig. So we had uh, that... I'm not sure what the wind was doing on that last round, but we seem to have had a number of really good results. So Susanna Canelli, the 16-year-old from the Papatoetoe Club in Auckland, coached by Marshall Hall, a former world champion representative in the discus. And so she was out to 47.45 in the last round, which is a, a lifetime best for her, adding 16 centimetres on. And obviously at, uh, at her age, fantastic prospect for the future. So that's really, really good. The world junior qualifier for uh, the woman is 48.50 so she's actually getting pretty close to that so pretty good result from Susanna I'm sure she'll be pretty happy and uh, so so will Marshall um, Zana Beatty who was uh, in fourth place was out to 44 which is the season's best for her so there's uh, plenty of good results in there, and um, although it was the discus, I'm sure that Zana beating Lauren that she will take a, a bit, of <laughs> bit of pleasure from that. Um, just a few centimetres in it with Lauren throwing 44-23, but uh, very good for Zana, who's uh, is 19, so still a junior, and uh, some really good results overall in the discus in that, uh, those last rounds. Absolutely, and that is all you can really ask for in conditions like these for these athletes to be pushing for personal bests and we've seen several both in the men's and women's discus brought to you by Group Web Design here at the International Track Meets at Napunawa this afternoon. I'm just going to touch on the schedule that we have coming up a little bit later in the program. It's a bit of a gap in proceedings here but we do have uh, the men's and women's triple jump coming to you in about half an hour's time but one of the focuses from Five past six will be the men's high jump brought to you by Bishop Dale Law from 6.05 and Craig Motley, Hamish Kerr from the Canterbury or Christchurch Old Boys Club. Personal best of two metres 31. Can he break that today? Well, he jumped 2.30 just last week. Uh, the wind looks like it's dropping a little bit. It's his home turf. He certainly can. I look forward to it. But in the meantime, we do have another interview from the field. Sarah Kelly-Ross, how have you managed to pull in for a chat? I'm here with the winner of the women's discus today, and she has set an amazing personal best, two metres to add to her uh, former personal best, 56 metres, Tatiana Komoana. Congratulations. Thank you. Tell us how it felt out there. Uh, it was really good. I was a little bit concerned at the start of the session, just with the wind and weather doing this standard Napuna I think but um, yeah it turned out really well and feeling good. Now you're based down here in Christchurch with Kim Mickle's squad how good is it to train with such a great group of throwers led by you know a former world championship medalist Commonwealth Games uh, title holder as your coach? Yeah Kim's um, just over there she's amazing um, can't really think of a better coach to have really I'm very grateful for everything she does for us and the squad's great it's good fun just yeah brings you back down and keeps you going. Now you're originally from Te Aroha. What's it like living away from home down here in Canterbury and uh, just enjoying this awesome athletics environment that Canterbury has to offer? Yeah, the main reason for the move was to be here for athletics, so it's good. It's very cold <laughs> compared to home. Um, yeah, you miss family a bit, but yeah, it's good. It's worth it. Now, National Champs next weekend in the Hawke's Bay. What will we, will we be looking out for in your events? Um, it should be a good competition with, between a few of us. Um, hopefully some really good weather up there. We love Hastings. Um, yeah, just some big throws hopefully on the cards. Well, congratulations on your personal best today. Tatiana Komoana in the women's discus, 50 me 56 metres, 51 today. A great result for her. Absolutely, Sarah. Yes, indeed. A fantastic result as we have a look at those distances up on the screen. But Tatiana Komoana with a personal best. Uh, Tapanisa Javier with a personal best as well which is uh, phenomenal stuff and and for Tapanisa that is enough for her to qualify for the Junior World Championships in Colombia later in the year but Tatiana she'll be looking to improve on that again for the track and field national championships in Hastings next week. For those of us for those of you just joining us it's been a a full-on couple of hours here at Napunawa, Craig Motley. Uh, we've had plenty of personal bests in the discus. We had 
an enthralling men's mile, which went right down to the wire. We had a, a photo finish in the women's 200 metres. What's, uh, what's really caught your attention over the last couple of hours? Oh, that women's 200 was, was phenomenal. Uh, yes, big tailwind, but two New Zealand sprinters running within a, a, a couple of 100 seconds of, of breaking 23 seconds. So the New Zealand record's only 22.90. Um, set by Monique Williams several years ago. So both of those uh, athletes, Georgia and Rosie, obviously in great form, and uh, that record could go at Nationals next week, and I'll, I'll be looking forward to seeing that. But that was a real highlight. That's the first time I think they've got to race with a decent tailwind together in lanes next to each other, and you saw what happened. Great photo finish. Couldn't tell from the angle we had. Had to wait a, a couple of minutes for the photos to to separate them, that's that's great racing. But also that discus, you know, tricky conditions for the discus throwers today. Um, and most of them, by the end, as you saw with a, a bunch of sixth round PBs, managed to mask it, master the conditions and uh, and use them to their advantage and throw big. And that's what they want a week out from nationals. Absolutely, for, for most of them in the discus, the nas uh, nationals will be their focus. And uh, same too for the likes of Georgia Hulls I think that national record, as you said, might be in jeopardy, but we will wait and see. We have uh, a, a program ahead of some events too with the triple jump, both in the men's and women's, and the men's 200-metre sprint. I know, Craig Motley, you're looking forward to very much. Tian Welpton, with a personal best of 21.28 seconds, hasn't run the 200 over the last few weeks, but has been rapid in the 100 metres. Well, I... I can say with almost absolute certainty that he's going to run faster than 21.28 tonight. I mean, I think he set that uh, a year or maybe two years ago. He's now a, a 10, 100 metre runner. He's going to have a tailwind and uh, he'll be in the 20s. It's just how low he goes in the 20s is, <laughs> is what I want to see. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's a wonderful young man, got a great attitude. He just wants to run fast and... Uh, doesn't often run 200s, uh, 100 is his, his specialty, and uh, but I think he's really looking forward to it on his home track, trains here all the time, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a matter of 20 point what, as far as I'm concerned. I can't wait for those of you tuning in for that. That race is at quarter past six, brought to you by the New Zealand Charitable Trust. One that I'm really looking forward to as well is the men's 800 metres. We've got four runners who have been uh, sub- 150 in their athletics careers. James Harding, Dominic Devlin, James Preston and Samuel Tanner. Fascinating race and prospect. Yeah, look, James Preston last week ran 400 metres at the Sir Graham Douglas in a couple of tenths of under 48 seconds for 400, which I think was a one and a half second personal best. So he is in top form. Uh, the wind seems to have dropped a little bit. The tent's not fluttering quite <laughs> as much. We were predicting a little bit of a, a drop for an hour or two, so uh, hopefully that's a good sign. Um, touching wood, wood here, you can't see me. And, um, yeah, so James is right ready. Uh, Sam Tanner, we saw a bit of banter between him and uh, Hayden Wild, and uh, apparently he's in pretty good form. It's his first hit out of the summer. Uh, he's, he's obviously focusing on those other events later in the season, but he ran a 148 last year, so he's got some speed in his legs got the two other sub 150 guys and then we have actually got one of the strongest 800 meter fields uh, I think we've seen in New Zealand for a long long time I cannot remember when we've had four New Zealand runners go under 150 in the same race and there's a couple of boys who've run 152 already this season if that weather if that wind drops down they could well go under that 150 barrier which is sort of the 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 thing that all 800 meter runners are looking for you break 150 you're, you're a genuine top class 800 meter runner and then you know I know that James Preston has got his eyes on Peter Snell's world record which was set 60 years ago almost to the day 60 years uh, yeah here in Christchurch February. so uh, I don't think it's going to go tonight but uh, you know he, he'll he'll be looking for for running he's run a couple of 148s in the North Island he'll be looking to go under that and uh, if the conditions play in the part then uh, that'd be great Fantastic. Looking forward to that one. 20 to 7, that means 800 metres, brought to you by Mainland Foundation. One of our many sponsors that we'd like to say thanks to for helping us bring to you the international track meet here at Napunawai.
It's always great to come out and you know compete on the home track and just you know hopefully hopefully go to get a good performance in. So we've got a massive year coming up. We've got um, Com Games and World Champs and and um, you know a really big bunch of competitions sort of around June, July. So this time of year it's all about just getting out there and enjoying competing again and it's a big um, big season for me this year. So after Nationals I'll shoot over and do World Indoor Champs and then I'll go over and I'm looking to try and get on the Diamond League circuit this year. So, so it's, it's hopefully going to be all go. Between last year, last ITM and this one, obviously there's been a few things happen and a few comps that I've been to which, which have been pretty exciting. Um, yeah, Tokyo was just an amazing experience. It was, it was amazing just to, to be out there competing with all the top guys in the world again. Obviously we'd had a bit of a hiatus with that, so, so it was just awesome to get out there and, and, just, and just take my, you know, take my skills and my trade that I've, I've developed over a number of years in New Zealand and take that to the international stage. And, and I think I sort of proved to myself and to the rest of the world that, that I am here to play and, and there is a lot of you know, great potential in my, in my body and there's some good jumps in me in the next few years. So, so yeah, it was cool just to get out there and, and sort of put a marker out to just say, hey guys, I'm, I'm out here and I'm ready to jump and let's get into it. A lot of people say that I, I look real chill and, and kind of cozy on, on screen and, and I think that's, you know, there's probably a little bit of truth in that, but I think that I'm probably a little bit ner more nervous than a lot of people realise as well. So it's just all about, you know, soaking up that atmosphere and really trying to, trying to make the most of it and trying to stay open to it because I think that if you get, you know, super caught up in the moment, then, then obviously it, it can help you, but it can also hinder you. So, so yeah, it's just, it's just a matter of going comp to comp and, and just seeing what it's like and taking in all those amazing experiences and, and just, just hopefully feeding off it. I think that, you know, from next year onwards, it would be awesome to see a lot of guys come over and compete because it's, you know, it's an awesome meet and there's, there's a lot to, to offer in New Zealand this time of year and a lot of different comps to, to kind of cruise around. So it's also great for the New Zealand public because, you know, athletics is an awesome meet and there's some really cool rivalries and some really cool performances happening overseas and, and it would be cool if we could tap into that here and, and, and really bring it to, to the New Zealand public. already has hit 2.30 metres this year. I believe that was up at the Sir Graham Douglas International just last week. Personal best, just one centimetre higher than that at 2.31. And as you heard there, determined in front to, at his home track, potentially not in front of friends and family because of the COVID restrictions, but hopefully those of Hamish's friends and family who are tuned in to the live stream will get to see him break that personal best height here this afternoon. The high jump coverage coming to you from five past six and 10 minutes after that gets underway. It's the men's 200 meter sprint brought to you by the New Zealand Charitable Trust. Tian Welton, as we mentioned earlier in our coverage, has been in sensational form in the 100 meters this season. He's running the 200 meters here on his home track this afternoon. And we caught up with Tian yesterday for his thoughts. Pretty exciting. I think, um, you know, to have a bronze event over here and possibly next year even silver, I think it's fantastic to attract sort of international competition, that sort of stuff. And, you know, having those kind of points, that kind of placing score available to, for me, you know, just around the corner from my house, I think it's really, really cool. And this is my home track, of course. So I'd love to race here. And yeah, it's pretty awesome to have such a high tech comp just around the corner from where I live. Good run out in pots uh, to get the New Zealand resident record. And then a bit of trouble with the conditions, but managing to, another, to run another good time over in Sir Graham Douglas, pretty stoked with that. So. Yeah, just got to keep going now, I guess. The 200 is not really my main event, but I know a lot of people are curious to see what I can do over it. Don't think I'll quite be pushing uh, Joseph Miller's national record, but it uh, should be fun to, to see what I can do and, um, yeah, just go out and have a good time. Plans for the rest of the year. Uh, Post-nationals, uh, looking at maybe taking a wee week or two off to get, a, get in some good prep for Aussie and then heading over there to do their nationals and uh, possibly the Brisbane Track Classic, which is the big one um, sometime, I think, early April. So yeah, and then after that, who knows? Um, whatever happens, happens. <laughs> of Tian Welpton, one of Canterbury's leading sprinter. And yes, indeed, I think we're all intrigued to see how he will do here in the men's 200 meters sprint at quarter past six. As he alluded to there, that national record was set 
almost five years ago now by Joseph Miller. That was a time of 20.37 seconds. Tian's personal best is 21.28. Uh, and with this wind advantage today, uh, probably officially uh, that won't be broken, but uh, Craig Motley ensures me that it will just be a matter of what time it is under that mark of 21.28 that we see Tian run in. Also in the field for that men's 200 metres, we have 16-year-old uh, Jordan Veach, another local sprinter. Uh, Asher Penengal brand also from the Christchurch Old Boys Club. Tommy Tapuni out of North Harbour. Uh, John Mottis from Selwyn. And Joshua Price, another young uh, Canterbury sprinter. So it will be a brilliant race in prospect coming to you on the live stream here at quarter past six. And to round out the program here at Napunawai this afternoon is a intriguing race in many eyes, as Craig Motley uh, alluded to slightly earlier. He can't recall the last time he thought uh, four men's 800 meter runners who have all recorded times around that 148, 149 mark have all run in the same race. The likes of James Harding, Dominic Devlin, James Preston and Samuel Tanner. Sam, of course, headed to the Olympics and represented New Zealand in the 1500 metres in Tokyo last year. And we caught up with Sam for his thoughts ahead of racing in the 800 metres later today. I've loved running at Crush. It's only run here like once or twice, but it's renowned to be a bit of a windy track. So expectations time-wise are just kind of blow the cobwebs out and get ready for nationals next week. There's going to be some good competition, so um, get ready for that and just throw down a little bit, I suppose. Yeah, so competition for me this year kind of is a little bit up in the air at the moment still, but it um, kind of starts out with the rest of the domestic season here, potentially a few races in Aussie, and then head over to the US and Europe to target some points for world champs and come off games. So I'll run hopefully 330, under 335, maybe get close to 330 mark um, in a couple of 15s or 350 mile maybe. And so that, that's kind of, the, kind of the rough goals and run fast and get points and then run well at Worlds and Com Games. One of my highlights from last year was when I went over to Staten Island, New York and raced the New Balance Grand Prix and I came away with 334 and a third place at the, I think it was a World Indoor Continental Tour a meet, so I was pretty happy with that. And it was a New Zealand 1500 metre indoor record, which I broke from Nick Willis. So it's a pretty cool opportunity to um, race a, a, in a recognised continental tour um, meet, and so that's an amazing opportunity, um, as well as the, the fact that you know, Nick Willis set it up, and so you know, kind of living in his legacy a little bit and, and trying to do as best I can in a situation like that is pretty cool, and also I get the chance to come down and um, open my season for the first time, so that'd be quite nice. And you know, I've had a bit of time off after the Olympics, so it'd be really awesome to open up with an 800. And um, yeah, I'm just super excited to run it. I'm just just stoked. I just love racing, so I've been fizzing, trying to, let's go. Yes, the thoughts there of Sam Tanner, the 21 year old out of Tauranga. And as you can see from that interview there, he is itching to get his domestic season underway here at the international track meet at Napunawai. That men's 800 metre race coming to you from 20 to 7, brought to you by the Mainland Foundation. We, of course, also have the women's 800 metres at 6.25, brought to you by Abbott's Insurance. The likes of Catherine Camp, uh, of the local hope from the Canterbury Club. Uh, she's one of our leading contenders with a personal best time of 2 minutes, 2.63 two seconds set back in 2019. So again, that will be another race to keep your eyes on that one there at 6.25. But we will uh, head back and turn our attention to the men's 800 metres. As we mentioned, it's going to be fascinating to see how these four runners who have all gone sub 150 uh, in the last year or two all go against each other. And one of those runs who is in sublime form is James Preston out of Wellington. And we caught up with James yesterday to get his thoughts ahead of the men's 800 metres. Yeah, so really looking forward to the race. Um, obviously, it's one of the stronger fields we've had over there 100 domestically. And 
at least for as long as I've been racing. So I'm um, hoping to set myself up well to go to Australia in a couple of weeks. Hopefully better the time I ran last year. Um, so as an athlete, I think it's the closest meet in New Zealand to something we'd get overseas, um, particularly in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, certainly there's been a big push, particularly from Craig, for a strong pacemaker, which for me, I guess as an athlete, um, particularly in the middle distance space, is sort of the main thing I'm looking for. Um, if I can get a good pacemaker to four, five hundred metres, that's sort of yeah, the most exciting thing. I think the last time I raced Sam would have been 2018 maybe, over the 800. Um, I raced him a wee bit last year over the 15 and got absolutely rolled out, um, but that was good fun. Um, so it should be interesting to see how he runs. Um, it's certainly good to be racing against an Olympian. We're racing Nationals next weekend um, and then the Thursday after going over to Aussie. So I'm going to race Sydney Track Classic, Melbourne Track Classic and then hopefully Brisbane later on. Might head over to Europe through July, August, but we'll sort of get through Aussie first and see how everything's going. Yeah, the season so far has been mostly good, uh, a bit of a mixed bag. Certainly the 800s was hoping to run maybe a fraction quicker. We ran down an event to the 400 last weekend and ran a, I think it was a two second PB, so really happy with that. Um, hopefully roll that through to this weekend. Since 2009, Christchurch has hosted the International Track Meet, showcasing track and field to the world assisting our brightest athletes to develop from talented teens to Olympians, athletes like Tom Walsh and Angie Petty. Now we invite you to compete. The Fast Five is your five kilometer road race. A scratch start, teams based road run, finishing on the athletics track at Napuna Wai. The Fast Five is a key fundraiser for the international track meet and an integral part of the weekend. Now you and your friends can compete. Five kilometers at your pace. Plus, catch New Zealand's best athletes live in action at ITM. The Fast Five is for everyone. Three person teams, five categories, corporate, crew, college, club or coach. Assemble your team for a fun Christchurch weekend. Support NZ's best athletes by supporting the Fast Five and International Track Meet. Big City Marathon meets National Road Relay meets Corporate Challenge. Another great event brought to you by International Track and Field Trust. Coverage here on Sky Sport Next of the international track meet here from Napunawai as we count down to session B, which includes the men's and women's triple jump, the men's high jump, the men's 200 metres, and the men's and women's 800 metres. Looking forward to bringing that to you. My name is Nick Bewley. For those of you just joining us here this afternoon, we've already had the best part of two and a half hours of fantastic track and field action. And here are some of the highlights from earlier in the day. Apologies, just a slight technical glitch there, but... Um I'm more than happy to talk through the highlights as Craig Motley rejoins me here in the commentary box. As we were touching earlier, obviously, on the discus uh, and, of course, the w uh, women's 200 metres as well, Craig. But um, th both those mile races as well were very intriguing races, particularly the men's, with, with young Chanel really pushing uh, an Olympic calibre athlete in Hayden Wild. That... Uh Hayden's experience really showed out there. Uh, he, he, you saw his interview afterwards, he pulled a bit wide so that Chanel had to go into the wind as well. And then uh, I think Chanel thought he had it, but uh, Hayden Wild showed why he's an Olympic medalist, went right through to the line and took the win by seven hundredths of a second. And that was, it was great racing, great match racing. And to run 4.09 and those sort of, that was probably some of the worst wind of the day to run a 4.09 mile that's like a, 351, 352, 1500, which is faster than both of their personal bests, I think. So they still did pretty well. Absolutely. Yeah, I completely agree. It was it was fascinating seeing those racing tactics. Uh, it looked like Hayden really wanted to see Chanel take a bit of that headwind on, but uh, uh, showing a fair bit of wisdom beyond his years there. Chanel, of course, just 19 years of age. But earlier uh, in the program, too, we had the 
uh, women's high jump and, and Kelly O'Hagan was a uh, uh, leading jumper there. Um, a little bit down on her season's best, but again, building another building block towards uh, next week's track and field nationals. Yeah, as you saw Keeley afterwards, like you said, there was big gusts of wind, very hard conditions for the high jumpers at that stage. To jump 178, I think she'll be pretty happy with that going into nationals, and she certainly jumped better than the rest of the field, so she'll take a lot out of that, and uh, I, th I really look forward to that high jump competition in Hastings. There's a, a couple of girls from up north who didn't travel down, plus the girls who are here, or the woman who are here, and, and Keeley herself, who's unbeaten this season so she's won in all sorts of conditions she's jumping close to her personal best should be a, a really good competition at nationals next week to our hurdlers that we had a little bit earlier this morning as well uh, this, this afternoon sorry and encouraging signs too for Joshua Hawkins uh, looking for six national titles uh, it was an encouraging performance for him a couple of st uh, strides over but uh, as you were just alluding to in our coverage a bit earlier, uh, Tapanisa Javier, for a young teenager to personal best and uh, really cement her place uh, to travel over to Colombia for the World Junior Track and Field Championships. Can't ask for more than that, Craig. Yeah, I think she had a great day. I'm not, I think it was just below her personal best. Might have been a season best in the discus. Uh, but getting up over 50 metres and the 15.63, which is only sort of 40 centimetres of her best in the shot put, both well over the world junior qualifying uh, her coach Adam Blake will be very happy uh, and yeah she's really cementing a, a, a seat on the plane for for Columbia um, she keeps throwing well over the qualifying distances in both the shot and the discus so really great performance and I, I think she'll be pretty happy and I think there's a little bit more there too she wasn't quite happy technically when I saw her outside she was like there's a bit more to come so like uh, we saw with Lauren or that those top athletes, that attitude of always wanting to find that little bit more, even if they throw a personal best, they're like, oh, I can do it better. <laughs> so great attitude and uh, looking forward to see what she can do over the next few years. We've, we really seem to be producing a number of throwers. Uh, Dale Stevenson was in earlier, and uh, that's a credit to, the, to what he's sort of set up. We've got a, a really uh, awesome throws community. The throws camps that they have every January are, are well attended by 30 or 40 athletes from all around the country we've got sort of these little groups and performance hubs Shaka Solar in Wellington John Eden up in Auckland Raylene Bates and and uh, down in Dunedin and Tyree and 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 a number of other coaches throughout the country apologies if I missed anyone out I should have um, I, d I did mention Ian Beard earlier as well who is based where I am in South Canterbury and is who's been the I guess the first coach for a number of the top athletes like Tom and Lauren Indeed, and speaking of Tom and Lauren, we heard uh, with uh, Sarah Kelly Ross's interview there with Tom, I think he gave himself a 6 out of 10 to, to get that one over to his best of 20.71 metres this afternoon. Obviously bigger things to come, but, but just great that he continues to give back to the international track meet. You know, he's been here for the best part of a decade now. Well, yes, he's one of our first winners back as a teenager in 2009, I believe, so... He's, he's, oh, he's a fantastic supporter of the meet. He loves uh, competing locally, and we've been very lucky uh, with Nick, the likes of Nick Willis when he's been in New Zealand has always competed. Tom's competed for several years. Lauren competed as, a, I think, a junior in a relay back in uh, 2009. So, um, and that's part of what we want to do with the international track meet is provide that pathway up for our local athletes to sort of, even the likes of Chanel Muir, the, the chance to rub shoulders and compete against an Olympic bronze medalist uh, triathlete, not a miler, but he's 19 years old and he's getting exposed to top level competition in New Zealand without having to travel. Unfortunately this year we've had to sort of do away with our children's and secondary school relays which have always been part of the meet, but that's just with the numbers due to COVID. So um, we're still providing a pathway. There's a number of teenagers throughout all the events who have had that exposure to international competition. And just seeing, you know, the likes of how Lauren Bruce compete um, competes in the hammer, how she cope with the conditions. The other athletes in the hammer will have will have picked up something from that, and uh, and that's that's part of what we aim for with the International Track and Field Trust. Absolutely well said. And and yeah, speaking of teenagers, I, I think we mentioned a number, several personal bests there in the discus towards the uh, end of the first session as the conditions were becoming slightly easier. And and you mentioned their 15-year-old Susanna Kennelly, uh, another one where. She's broken her personal best and is, is inching towards that, uh, that that junior world qualification mark as well, just 15. Yeah, 47 metres at 16 years' age in the discus. Um, absolute 
phenomenal performance. Um, her coach Marshall Hall will be very happy, I'm sure. And uh, they've hopefully got a little bit of, you know, one eye open on that uh, forty-eight fifty qualifying. <laughs> Though, there, there could be a real selection issue for the selectors <laughs> if, they, if we get several going for it. But uh, she'll still be eligible for World Juniors in two years' time as well. So, um, yeah, great prospect in the discus, and uh, and she also threw pretty well in the shot put, finishing up with a eleven. People, we want results, and Hamish will be trying his best just to stick to his routine, stick to his process, and take on those, you know, really finite changes which will add up to uh, greater heights. And what I did see at 2.34 last week, in a few strides out, he did slow down a little bit. So I'd like to see him really put the, take the handbrake off and unleash. Well, fingers crossed we see it a little bit later this evening. Uh, it's certainly... I think it's, it's, it's a great sign for him to say, you know what, it was fantastic going to the Olympics and finishing 10th and making the final, but I get one real crack at this, you know, an athlete's career is pretty short, get one crack at this, I want to be a guy who's competing for, for podiums, I want to be right up there, so for him to, you know, it's an ultimate risk and reward battle, isn't it, but it could potentially, the reward could be massive when he's, there's a huge international season in prospect with Commonwealth Games and World Championships. It is, and it, it's an exciting year for Hamish, and I, I really love the maturity of the guy and the fact that he is prepared to risk. And what has he got to lose? Yeah. That's the thing. And, and when you do try and go faster in the high jump, you think it, it's really hard to try and control some of the positions because top tip, you've got to stay away from the bar to jump over it, <laughs> which is just totally um, for your mind, something that can blow it, uh, you know, it's, yeah. it's really hard to kind of fathom. Um, but at these heights that Hamish is at, we are talking about millimetres, which can make a huge difference. The difference between, you know, in the Olympic final uh, to not being to on the podium, to a top eight finish. And what we know with Hamish Kurt, he is certainly capable of podium places in major championships in the future. Completely agree. And it's, it, as you said, it's been great to see that growth and maturity. I believe he was here last year and uh, his uh, the meet record is 2.2. .2. So fingers crossed as we get join the coverage here now of the high jump and might be just the gentleman warming up at this stage. Bib 259 there, I believe, is Thomas Maloney out of Auckland City. And that's a nice clearance from Thomas. I'm loving the headband too, actually. <laughs> well, it is very blustery, as you're aware, Sarah. So <laughs> keep, the, keep those luscious locks out of uh, the eyesight and go through as we see the close-up replay there for Thomas. And a nice start to his competition. Of course, for those of you just waiting for the men's 200-metre sprint, about five minutes away. Fascinating to see how Tian Welpton goes in that one. Just to give you some perspective on actually how high uh, Hamish is jumping. So your doorway at home is 2 metres 11. So go, go in there, just standard doorway. Now add 20 centimetres. That is how high Hamish here is jumping, which is ridiculous. I jumped 191, uh, which, you know, is, is reasonably high, no, but absolutely. actually 231, as we're seeing Anna Thompson there in the women's triple jump. Amazing footage here from our crew on the ground. Our super slow-mo stuff has been fantastic. Look at the stress she's putting on her body through there to get through to the pit. So Anna is the national champion, uh, personal best, 13.06 set last year at the national championships. Great to see her. Finally, over the 13 metre mark, her brother Scott Thompson uh, was also the national champion, coached by their father Richard. So great to see them down here in Christchurch in action today. Absolutely, yes, the men's and women's triple jump is sponsored by Oceania Athletics. We thank them for supporting this event. And yes, let's have a look at the men's field. We have Hamish Gillette, Gillette, a 15 year old out of Christchurch All Boys Athletics Club as we cross back to the high jump. We'll hold it there. And it looks like Ethan
open bone there. Just clipping the bar on the way over. Excuse me if I get the pronunciation wrong here of Mate Poduji. Pod but a good first clearance. We'll get the hike for you at home very shortly. Just a note about the triple jump. The men's and women's are running in separate pits, separate competitions, but they're running at the same time. And the height there is 189 currently in the men's high jump. Looks like we're not too far away from the men's 200 metre sprint brought to you by the New Zealand Charitable Trust. Got about two minutes before start time of that one. Really appreciate the thoughts and expertise there of Sarah Cowley Ross as Craig Motley joins the fold. And Craig, we've been talking about it. The talking stops. It's time for sprinting. Can't wait. Yes, I'm really looking forward to this race, Tian Welpton. So I'm going to put the pressure on you. You, you tried to force uh, Sarah and I into a decision. <laughs> I was waiting for so, this. So pick a number. Pick pick what time Tian Welpton is going to run. He's going to have a, a three-metre tailwind, so it's going to be quick. Well, you've been saying all afternoon that he'll go, he'll beat his personal best. It, not not officially. So I'll start. I'll start there. I think let's let's go 21 flat. 21 flat. I think that's very conservative. But, uh, <laughs> Let's see, let's go through the rest of the field. Uh, so we've got uh, in lane three, Jordan Veach, our Christchurch Boys High, one of the top 16-year-old uh, sprinters in the country. 50-second, uh, 400-metre runner, so he'll be strong too. Asher Pettengill Brand, uh, excellent sprinter and hurdler. In lane three, coached by Jill Morrison from Christchurch Old Boys, and he's got a personal best of 21.95, so he'll be looking to go into 22 again. Tian Welpton in lane five. We've mentioned him plenty of times. Tommy Tapuni, turning 20 this year. Personal best of 21.42. Son of the New Zealand high jumper, Roger Tapuni. John Mottis, another local lad uh, for the Selwyn Club in lane seven. And then in lane eight, Joshua Price from Christchurch Old Boys. Looks like, looks like we might have a scratchy there. Looks like Tommy Tapuni's not in... Lane six, so all action in the middle of the track, Tian Welkton. Oh, stumbled out of the blocks there and they're pulled back. Might have been a bit of a action. We'll see what happens from the judges there. This might have been just a bit of a gust of wind as they were coming out there, so we'll just wait and see what happens. So Old Boys United, Russia's Old Boys United, one of the top sprints and jumps clubs in the country. Plenty of young talent in the men's and the women's grades. And three of these boys, so Jordan Veach, uh, Asha Pengel Brand, Joshua Price, uh, all at Christchurch Boys High and at the last New Zealand Secondary Schools, they won both the 4x1 and the 4x4. See a green card there from the judges, so uh, that means there's a uh, no advantage, no disadvantage, no one's DQ'd. So uh, we go again to the start blocks. So five of our top juniors, five of our top local juniors, Tian Welton in lane five. Driving out hard and fast straight away. He's already caught the men on the outside and he is going. Look at that stride. He is driving around. He'll be getting that southerly behind him now. Standing up tall and carrying on to the finish. Big long stride. Tian Welton, South African born. Asha Pettengill Brand on the inside in second. Jordan Veach coming home with his 400 metre strength. Wow. That was quick. He is a clear winner, Tian Welton. That's what we expected. Now we just need to have a look at the time. Last 20 or 30 metres. Might have just dropped a little bit. We'll be looking 
to see how he's got. Yes, well, I just had a crack on my stopwatch there, and I don't want to get too carried away, but I think you're right, Craig, in terms of me being conservative, potentially, with 21 flat. Serious strides there from Tian. Just in the background, we see Jaden Williamson preparing for the high jump. We'll get that official time, or potentially unofficial time, first through Sarah, who's not far away from having a chat to Tian. But yes, encouraging signs, isn't it, Craig? A week out from Nationals and a big international season in store. He has... Is it fair to say he's just scratching the surface of where he is at as a sprinter at the moment? Oh, absolutely. I mean, he has only really taken it really seriously the last couple of years. I read an interview somewhere he, he wanted to play on the wing for the Springboks. <laughs> uh, well, we won't hold that against him. Uh, but, uh, yeah, specialising in the sprints um, and his just made some giant strides literally and figuratively <laughs> yep. in the in the last sort of 18 months um, and run some very very fast times doesn't run 200 that often and uh, but that will certainly help his 100 as well the strength and the finishing and look forward to see what he can do uh, not only at the New Zealand champs but he's going to go to the Aussie champs and Brisbane and you know maybe the Commonwealth Games and World Champs as well Absolutely, and like you mentioned earlier, getting that endurance and extending it out to 200 metres, no doubt, is a good sign for Tian. Right, let's cross to Sarah Cowley-Ross with Tian Welpton. I'm here with the men's winner of the 200 metres, Tian Welpton. Far out, that looked fast. You're twice as far as you're usually <laughs> used to running this season. The clock clocked the finish line at 20.65, unofficial. How did that feel out there? Well, pretty good. It's quite windy out here today, so... The goal for today was just to be able to pick the feet up on the home straight and as you can hear twice as tired as normal so <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I'm um, not pretty good happy with that you've run a lot of 100s this year uh, 20 uh, sorry 10 19 New Zealand resident record equal with Eddie Osai Nikita 10 09 a windy in the Hawks Bay next weekend is there an event you're targeting for qualification for major championships this year probably more than 100 meters I'd say uh, my training hasn't been too geared towards running this distance, so yeah, more than 100 for sure. And national champs next weekend, what are we looking forward to? Uh, what event are you going to be doing? I'll definitely be doing the one, so you'll be able to catch me there. And yeah, Hastings is probably my favourite track. It's a quick track and uh, going to give it my all. <laughs> and after nationals, what's your plans, Tian? Plans are to go to Australia, do the Australian nationals and then Brisbane Track Classic. And the ITM 2022 uh, must be so nice to run in your home track today. Oh, for sure. To be able to sleep in my bed and, you know, wake up and just come. I just, live just around the corner, so it's fantastic. And, uh, yeah, not awesome to run here. Love it. Well, it's great to see you in action. You've had an outstanding season so far. And we can't wait to see you in action at the National Champs next weekend. Tian Welpton, the winner of the Men's 200 today at the ITM. Thank you very much, Sarah, as we, yes, digress on Tian Welpton's performance there. The official time is 20.70 flat with a wind advantage of 4.9. Craig Motley, you got me there. I was conservative with 21, but obviously it's it's not an official time because of that wind advantage. But in terms of confidence, uh, seeing he can run at that speed and at that time, that's got to be huge heading into the Nationals next week. Absolutely, and like Tian said, he, he's not specifically training for the 200. His focus is all on the 100 and that sort of 10 seconds of explosive speed. So to having the speed endurance to still hold on and run a 2070, uh, which took, uh, well, I mean, it's not a personal best with the wind, but to run half a second faster than he's ever run before, yeah. wind or no wind, will give him a great deal of confidence. Indeed, and as you heard in that interview with Sarah, his focus obviously is primarily on the 100 metres, which he will race in next week before heading over to Australia. The likes of, of Eddie, that we're obviously well aware of over there at the moment, um, but some I'm sure some fast Australian sprinters as well. It's not it's going to push him further, you'd have to think. Oh, absolutely. Coming from a field here where he's in front after 30 or 40 metres, that's not going to happen in Australia. They've got a number of young runners um, 
young sprinters who have, have run uh, under 10-2, under 10-3. Uh, he's got no guarantee of even making the final at the Australian <laughs> Champs. Um, you know, Eddie has been in a couple of races over there. He's finished second and third. He's won a couple. So there's a lot of competition, and that just brings out the best in the sprinters. They, you know, there's it's a it's ten seconds of really, really <laughs> explosive speed, and having someone on your shoulder the whole way. There's no let up, and uh, yeah, I expect to see some some fast times if he gets good conditions in Aussie. Absolutely, definitely one to watch. Remember the name Tian Welpton. As we cross back to our coverage of the men's high jump. And I believe that was Murdoch. young Levi Murdoch. Yep, 16-year-old. Clipping the bar there, unfortunately for him. Just while we're uh, watching there, here's Ethan Bone coming in. Oh, oh very narrow. I think the bar is at 189, possibly 194 for these gentlemen. Just while we're waiting for the next high jump, we'll just go. We had a, the B Women's 200 a, a little while ago. The winner was Holly Finn from South Canterbury in 25.88 seconds. From Maya Columbus, 26.16. Holly Gray, 26.42. Emily Jackson, 26.48. And Anna Stephen, our Paralympian, uh, finishing in 29.02. Another good attempt, but not quite there. That is Mate Paduje. Not sure if we've got the pronunciation there right. He's a 201 jumper this year. Now Thomas Maloney coming in. So the bar at one ninety four at the moment for these jumpers. Just have that confirmed. Just a quick update on the triple jump while we're waiting. Scott Thompson in the men's leads with 14.62 from Ethan Gow, 1387, and Charles Devlin, 1385. And here we see the women's 800 away. Macy Hilton on the outside, earlier progress, and Laura Smith in the middle there is the pacemaker. So they'll be looking to follow her through in about 62 seconds. Macy Hilton, who we mentioned earlier in the preview on Wednesday night, ran a big personal best of 2.06. Cara McDermott tucking in behind her. Catherine Camp coming round the outside as they chase Laura Smith around. They want to be using her into the wind. She's just got a bit of a lead on them. Macy Hilton on the inside there. Rosaria Gibson at the back for University of Canterbury. Just giving the pacemaker a little bit of a lead, a little bit hesitant to go with her into the wind. See what the pace is coming through. So in the chasing bunch, we've got Cara McDermott, Macy Hilton, Catherine Camp, Kira Hall, the other outstanding junior coming around the outside, Rosa Twyford there from University of Canterbury as well. Laura Smith takes them through 400 and is still going. She's going to keep pushing as long as they keep chasing her. Have to be careful, the rabbit doesn't get away. So they're tracking her. Macy Hilton looking very comfortable after her 2.06. Laura Smith steps off the track. So Macy Hilton will lead them into the wind in the back straight. Cat Camp right on her shoulder. Cara McDermott boxed in a little bit. Rosaria Gibson coming around the outside. Kira Hall, 16-year-old Kira Hall in fourth place there. She's got a very strong finish. Got Emma Ferguson and Rosa Twyford both there. Rosaria Gibson as well. Very strong field of some of our best. And, and Catherine Camp has gone at 200 metres. She's made a bit of a burst to get ahead. Chloe Hughes tucking in on the back there from the Port Hills Club. And Catherine Camp has really opened up. She's surprised them, I think, and got a jump on the field. Cara McDermott chasing. Kira Hall coming around the outside. Rosa Twyford from the university. Big, long strides coming down. 
She's looking good. At who's going to take second? Catherine Camp has got this absolutely wrapped up, and it's going to be a photo. Cara McDermott and Rosa Twyford just heading off Kira Hall. Sammy Fuchs, the secondary school's under-16 champion a year or so back, coming through. Emma Ferguson there. Emma Douglas, Macy Hilton. Wow, what a burst by Catherine Camp, the multiple New Zealand... Uh, medalist champion over 800 metres has long been involved with uh, many tussles with Angie Petty uh, over the years, really showed her experience and jumped the field at uh, at about 200 metres and uh, by the time they all reacted it was game over Too late indeed, showing her experience there in uh, Catherine Camp as you mentioned uh, long time for a long time she's competed against uh, Angie Petty Wish Angie well. She's tuning in at the moment ahead of. She's due in April. You mentioned Craig Watley. Yes, and two of her runners in there. So she coaches uh, Kira Hall and uh, Rosaria Gibson, who are the two in, on screen now. Both 16 year old, both very talented. Uh, like I said, Kira Hall's already run a world junior qualifier, and uh, I think she finished fourth there. So very good Encouraging introduction signs. for a, a 16 year old. Absolutely. And a very good attempt at that height by Thomas Maloney, just scraping the bar there as he goes through. See the 800 metre runners, all with a bit of lactate and a bit of stagger. And it looks like Adam Stack is coming out for the high jump, number 279. Just while we're waiting for his jump, just a quick update on the women's triple jump. So on the men's triple jump, so Scott Thompson leads with 14.62 still. Ethan Gow with 13.87 and Charles Devlin 13.85, only two centimetres between them. Looks like as we wait for Adam Stack's attempt here at the high jump, we will cross to Sarah Cowley-Ross, who has the women's 800 metre winner, Catherine Camp of the women's 800 metres. Catherine Camp, a dominant display in that last 200. How did that feel? Um, to be honest, that win was pretty rough out there today, but yeah, I knew if I could just get to that top 200 and then finish strong, the wind would push me along. So yeah, the last 200 was definitely pretty good. Well, it was a competitive field through, the, through uh, 600, and then you really just put the gas down. Uh, will that be the strategy for the national champs next weekend, or is it or do we want to keep that under wraps right now? Can't give too much away, <laughs> but everyone knows that's kind of how I race, so <laughs> yeah. Next weekend, you have uh, competed over 15 this summer as well. Uh, will you likely to do the double? Yeah, I think I will. Um, it's never a great day on the 15, but um, I like to give it a go, just to challenge myself. We love seeing you out here, Kat. Still going, still going strong. And uh, we'll see you next weekend at the, in Hawke's Bay for the National Championships. Winner of the women's 800 today, Catherine Camp. there with a time of 2 minutes 10.59. Definitely a lot to unpack there from the women's 800 metres. Craig Motley, what took your liking? Obviously fantastic result from Catherine, but some encouraging times too for our, our younger runners. Oh, great racing. Fantastic tactical racing in the wind and a masterclass by the most experienced runner in the field. Uh, one other result there, Sammy Fuchs. Um, 16 year old Sammy Fuchs, 2.11.73. I think that's a three second personal best for her. And fifth, she finished very strong. So great running uh, from her. And Emma Ferguson from uh, the Fielding Mowers Club, 2.12.58. I think that's a huge personal best for her. So a couple of them got dragged along to really fast times, which, um, you know, what's what we want from our young athletes. Indeed, yes. Encouraging signs for our. Middle distance women's runners heading into the Nationals up in Hastings next week as we rejoin the coverage of the men's high jump.
add a mistake here. those of you just tuning in we are about eight minutes away from the men's 800 meters we will be across that for you here on sky sport next oh great jump by adam stack he's very happy with that very very happy i think that uh bar might be at 199 now so uh that's that's a personal best is that a personal best yeah he's very happy with that Yep, just confirm that that bar is at 199. Now we have Marcus Walton. Personal best of 2.11 metres and a season's best of 2.08. He's had first time clearances at 189 and 194. Oh, and he clears that very easily. He'll be happy with that. Trains under Terry Lomax with Hamish Kerr. Uh, so Marcus will be pleased with that. So we see the replay from going over the bar. And very comfortable. He's definitely got more height in him today. Like the shoes too, Craig. <laughs> Don't have to get away with those in town, but um, yeah, lighting up the track is Marcus. Adam Stack also trains with that group. You see the boys congratulating each other there. There's Sam Tanner just doing a stride out of the background. False start there from Ethan Bone. Ethan Bone, yep. So Ethan's missed once already 199, so uh, he cleared 194 on the third attempt. This would be a personal best, previous or current personal best rather, of 1.97. Well, he's never been over this height before. I see Marcus going over and giving him a bit of encouragement. Again, great to see that camaraderie between uh, all the high jumpers. Ethan's only 16 years old. It's a good height. All right, so just hits it with his hand on the way up. That might have been his final attempt looking at the, the judges adjusting the, the bar. So we'll move to the next height, which is 2 metres 04. About five minutes away now from the men's 800 metres brought to you by Mainland Foundation. We will join coverage of that race as soon as our runners are taking their starting positions. We'll just give a quick update on the women's triple jump as well. Uh, Anna Thompson leads with a jump of 12.79 metres. She has been extremely consistent. 1274, 1279, 1261, 1271, and a 1264. So, very consistent jumping, but she'll be looking like Sarah Cowley Ross mentioned earlier to break that 13 metre mark. In second place, Diana Isma Golova, 11.58 metres, only 10 centimetres ahead of Helena Dennison from Christchurch Old Boys United. So, very close competition the women's triple and in the men's triple after a few rounds we still have Scott Thompson in the lead with 14.62 meters and we see the officials there and use the big stick to measure getting up over two meters now 204 is our next progression in the high jump Hamish Kerr, of course, our leading high jumper, yet to have an attempt this afternoon, but we will bring you that most likely after the men's 800 metres. So we look at some replay action here. That was an earlier clearance from Marcus Walton. Be nipping away, trying to improve get close to that personal best of 2.11 but first we'll have Adam Stack so Adam's already jumped 199 which is a personal best so this will be his first attempt at over two meters also doesn't been a long jump Adam but uh, under the training of 
Terry Lomax and James Sandylands has just uh, come down from Nelson for university and uh, just keeps getting better. Going through his pre-jump routine. Oh, and that's a very good attempt. He can feel it, so he's getting happy about it. Indeed, it's really anything from here's a bonus, right? Craig, he would have probably gone in with goals of improving his personal best and I mean, surely cracking two metres will feel a little bit better than 199, yeah, but yeah. Uh, Two metres is a big big barrier for uh, for our high jumpers, especially the junior ones getting over two metres and we start seeing the uh, 800 metre runners there James Preston Sam Tanner um, John Gerber will be do taking the pace and here is the field. Max Karamanolis, 153 runner out of Wellington Harriers. Russell Green hasn't run an 800 for a couple of years, but ran a 346, 1500 metres in at Sir Graham Douglas meeting last week. So is in fine form and looking to uh, to beat that. Dylan Ford, personal best of 152.46. James Harding, 148.95. Benjamin Wall, a 150. 0.58 runner James Ford, the 16 year old from Takapuna, another outstanding young talent, has already run 152.73 this season. Dominic Devlin from ACA, 149 runner James Preston, the favourite, personal best of 146.52 last year. He's right there with the pacemaker John Gerber, 48 second 400 metre man. Sam Tanner there in the outside lane, he's run 148 as well, but it's his first hit out of the season. So let's see what they can do. Absolutely, and we thank Mainland Foundation for their support of this event, the men's 800 metres at the International Track Meet here at Ngāpūnawai. through those starters again. Max Karamanolis on the inside. Russell Green, Dylan Ford, James Hart, uh, sorry, uh, Ben Wall and uh, James Harding and Logan Cowie, Ben Wall. James Ford, Sam Averill, Dominic Devlin. John Gerber, just losing his balance slightly and putting his hand down there. Possibly a little bit nervous uh, for his pacing. But uh, James Preston in the lane with him and Sam Tanner on the outside. So a little bit of nervousness on the line. Still a little bit of wind blowing out there, but conditions definitely better than earlier. John Gerber, big powerful strides. Good 400 metre runner, James Preston just hugging behind him as they come around. Dylan Ford through on the inside as John Gerber heads across and James Preston just cruising along behind him. Sam Preston's tucked in behind, Sam Tanner just tucked in behind James Preston. And they go through the 200 in about 25 seconds, which is spot on. James Preston looking for a very fast time here. Big train of lads here looking for fast times. John Gerber just starting to work now, push them ahead. James Preston looks very relaxed in second. Sam Tanner's having to work a bit hard behind him. John Gerber staying out wide just to give them a free reign. James Harding's in there. He's the world junior qualifier already. Dylan Ford, Dominic Devlin coming round. Russell Green in there looking for a huge personal best. James Ford, the 16-year-old. Sam Averill coming round as well. Max Karamanolis and Logan Cowie at the back there. And Ben Wall has just dropped off the back, but he's a 1,500 runner. He'll have the strength. John Gerber gets him to 500. Now, they want to go through 600 in about 118. So let's see what they're going to do. 115, 116, 117, 118, 119 through 600. So let's see what happens here. James Preston's starting to work. He's worked, oh, taken all that work into the win. Sam Tanner's sitting on him. Harding and Devlin, the other sub-150 runners are there. Max Karamanolis just trailing the field there. Sam Tanner is working hard, and James Preston looking very strong, though. And he's just striding away. Dominic Devlin's coming around. James Harding for third place. 
the strength of Russell Green coming through. He's got the 1500 strength, and that was 147, we think. Dominic Devlin, Harding, Green, Cowie, Averill, and Wall. Max Karamanolis, James Ford, and then Dylan Ford just struggling in there. He might have got a heel clip or something. He looked like he just came to a bit of a halt around the... Uh, the last bend, but there will be some fast times in there, I think, in these windy conditions. 147 something, we believe, for uh, for the winner, for James Preston. Sam Tanner in second, and uh, will we have four guys under 150? That's the question. Absolutely, and it even it look like James Preston might have cooled off a little bit with five metres to go. Uh, we celebration as he cross the finish line we await the times and I'm sure Sarah Cowley Ross will get the thoughts of James after that fantastic run he's right on pace I believe that first 400 and around about that 52 53 second mark we'll just quickly go through the times of the woman just while we're waiting through so Catherine Camp, 208.94. Rosa Twyford in second, 210.32. Just a tenth ahead of Cara McDermott. Kira Hall in 210.59. Sammy Fuchs in 211.73. Huge personal best. Rosaria Gibson in sixth, 212.43. Just ahead of Emma Ferguson, 212.58. Another big personal best. Macy Hilton, 213. Emma Douglas, 214.19. Indeed, and yes, we don't want James Preston to get too cold, so we'll get Sarah Cowley Ross to get his thoughts right now. The winner of the men's 800 metres. Preston here, winner of the men's 800, one of the feature races of the ITM 22. James Preston, how was that? Um, it was alright, it was a bit windy, well, very windy, but ran a pretty solid run, so can't really complain. 147, that's a season best for you. Uh, your personal best, 146. Uh, what are we looking at for Nationals next week? Um, we'll see. I think I'll try and take it on pretty hard. Uh, make, the, make the most of the points on offer. Now, I heard that there was a bit of smack talk at the press conference between you and Sam Tanner yesterday, which is great, by the way. Uh, Sam Tanner, a Tokyo Olympian in the 1500. Great to see him out there racing the eight, though, today. Uh, how was it? racing him and do you feel like you got one up on him after that race now? Don't think I got one up on him, maybe if I could get him over the 15 which would be a pretty big run but nah, it's certainly good to have a couple of quick guys there, I think that's really what I've been lacking the rest of the season so um, you can sort of hear him there through the back straight and sort of try to roll it along there so yeah. And are you going to enter the 400 as well at Nationals after your personal best at the Sir Graham Douglas last weekend? Um, I wish, I don't think the timetable allows for it but maybe in the future. And after this weekend, after Nationals, what's your plans uh, for the rest of the year? Yeah, so I'm going to race in Sydney and then Melbourne, uh, maybe Brisbane after that. Great. Well, we're really looking forward to seeing you. James Preston, the winner of the men's 800 today in a season best time, 147. Preston for giving us his time there after the race, which... Yes, indeed, a season's best time. We're waiting for that official mark, but 147. Craig Motley, uh, I know Sarah predicted Sam Tanner to be there in front, but uh, James Preston, he's just quietly going about his work, and you'd have to be a brave person to bet against him for the Nationals next week. Absolutely, and to run 147 in these conditions, uh, looks like we're going to the high jump just quickly. This will be the starting height, I think, for Hamish Kerr. And uh, yeah, but 147 for, for James, fantastic. And pushed all the way by Sam, he, he didn't go away, he still yeah. hung in there, but Sam, uh, but James looking very strong. And here's Hamish, oh, easy first clearance there. We clap to the few people in attendance. Yeah. But uh, encouraging start for Hamish Kerr. And as you mentioned, Craig, next week, Hastings, usually quite still. It's a fast track. 147, um, that, that personal best. Yeah, we have the times here. So those third and fourth, just over 150. So, yeah, some huge personal bests in there. Russell Green, that's a five-second personal best. 
Logan Cowie, a narrow personal best there, 153.21, just knocked a couple of tenths off. And um, it looks like Hamish might be calling it quits there. I'm not, not sure uh, what it is, but he may just have a slight niggle in his foot. Uh, it appears that might be the case. Let's see Sarah Cowley Ross. Might have to get her to do a bit of investigative work for us. But uh, it doesn't appear to be introductory handshakes, does it? So, slightly unfortunate there for Hamish, potentially. <laughs> Sarah will get a hold of him in a second, we I'm sure. See. Yeah. Yep. But it looks like the jump is being put on, so... We all wait in anticipation. But go, just going back to that 800 for a second, that, yeah, great racing, fantastic for some of those fringe 800 metre runners to get a quality race behind the likes of James Preston and Santana. Um, but I think Sam will be pretty happy with that. First race of the season, uh, and he's he's gone sub 150, and uh, and he's you know only a cup, only a, only a couple of strides behind the the form 800. That's it, and it has to be, that is a big caveat, isn't it, you know, ja James Preston, he's, he's run a couple of times, a few times now this season across the d various middle distances, Sam Tanner just getting about his work, so he'll take some, some confidence from that, but uh, yeah, we wait to see how it all fun unfolds next week, but in the meantime, we are going to cross to Sarah Cowley, who I believe has tracked down Hamish Kerr. We are here. And we are here with the winner of the men's high jump, Hamish Kerr. 2.10 today, just one jump in the competition, one and done. What's up with that? <laughs> Look, I mean, I'm sure everyone at home is sick and tired of hearing about the weather, but yeah, for me, it's just it's just about minimising injury and, and making sure that I'm all good for the next few comps. So yeah, I came out, did a jump, and yeah, body's just feeling like it's probably a little bit on edge, so I just decided I'd just pull it. Uh, you have a big year ahead of you, so safety first, uh, and great to see you at the ITM 2022. Uh, what does the next week leading into nationals look like for you? Um, just a lot of recovery, that's the main thing for me. I mean, the work's done, we just got to put it in practice and, and hope that a good one comes out next weekend. Now, we do have the bar above me uh, for perspective. As you can see, it is taller than Hamish. For those at home, Hamish, tell us your actual your height. So I'm 198, um, and this bar here is 210, I believe. So, so yeah, it's, it looks quite high, but I can also obviously jump a little bit higher as well. So I think my PB is sort of up here a bit. So. So a uh, normal door frame is 2.11 if you're watching at home and Hamish can jump 2.31 which is our national record. Hey you have got a big year ahead of you, how are you going to use your experiences of being in the Olympic final in Tokyo to prepare you for Oregon World Championships and also the Commonwealth Games? I think it's about belonging, I think um, for me it's, it's knowing that, that I really enjoy that atmosphere and, and I really belong there and, and it's, it's fun to go out and do those big comps, it's, it's not something that I look towards now and it's daunting for me. I, I, I really fizz it and I really look forward to it. So yeah, I'm excited to get out and compete and, and you know get against the big boys again. So it should be good. Well, you are one of the big boys uh, being an Olympic finalist now and uh, we are really looking forward to seeing you in action. Next weekend at National Champs and leading into the international season, it has been a great day. It's been chilling, let's, let's not ignore the facts, but it's been a great day here at Ngāpunawai in Christchurch uh, for the ITM 22. Hamish, what was your favourite performance, other than obviously the men's high jump? <laughs> I mean, I only turned up like <laughs> half an hour before the high jump started, but I was watching a little bit of stuff on the live stream and it seems like there were some pretty good throws. Um, I always love watching the throws because it's sort of a little bit of a, a technical event like the high jump, but um, but that was good. Yeah, I think I think hurdles looked like it was um, probably quite fun on a day like today. There'd probably be a lot of people under striding to make sure they're getting to the to the line and making sure they're not smacking those hurdles. So yeah, I mean it looked like everyone was you know having fun and getting out there and making the most of the the conditions. So yeah, it was good.
Well, for me, it was uh, Tatiana Komoana, one of my favourite events today. She did a two metre PB, which is fantastic and which is what it, this is about. This is a continental tour event on the World Athletics uh, Tour bronze so a great level i also saw young penelope salmon uh do uh close to her pb but the joy she felt when she realized she'd won 500 dollars in prize money twenty five thousand dollars has been given away today to these athletes for their prize money which is hugely significant so thanks so much to all those who have made that happen my other favorite performance Georgia Howells in the women's 200, dipping under 23 for the first time. Wind assisted, but let's hope next week we get some good wins in the Hawke's Bay. It's been a fantastic afternoon of athletics. Thank you so much for joining us at home, and we'll see you back next year at the ITM 2023. Uh, I'll just have to remember the date. It's all a blur the last two years, let's face it. Uh, but next week, catch us in the Hawke's Bay at the National Track and Field Championships. That's me. I'm going home to warm up now. Fantastic stuff there from Sarah Kelly Ross. Yes, well earned uh, rug up and get it warm. It's been a, a big old day for you out there in the field as it has been for so many of our athletes. So safety first approach there from Hamish Kerr, clearing 2.10 uh, uh, with relative ease. Of course, his personal best is well beyond that at 2.31. But Craig Motley for him, obviously bigger fish to fry, but all the same for him to come down here, support this event, which is on his home track. Uh, it's great to see him back here at the ITM as well. Absolutely, and a uh, class competitor, and he's just really stepped up over the last 18 months. And like he was just saying, he feels like he belongs there, and that's a, a huge thing to go to a world championship stadium full of 50,000 people and feel like you belong and um, then you can jump well. The, those nerves go away with the experience, and he knows if he can jump in the 230s on the big stage, then he's he's up there contesting the, the medals. I'm the gonna I'm gonna put you on the spot here. What's been your your highlight performance of the afternoon? Oh, good question. Good question. I uh, love the 200, the women's 200. Um, seen Georgia and Rosie both get within a whisker of 23 seconds, even with the tailwind. And then Tian, 2070. You know, for a guy who specialises in the 100, running 2070, pretty awesome. Sarah mentioned Tatiana and the discus. That was pretty phenomenal. But just actually, for me, I love seeing our our young athletes. And I'll have to look through uh, the results, but I think there was plenty of personal bests uh, behind our, our established stars, which is just fantastic in tough conditions. So i uh, love to see that in the throws. Yeah, the personal best has definitely been uh, my my highlight of the day because at the end of the day, I feel like that's usually the goal you come in with. You want to continue to uh, push yourself and exceed what is a, obviously a very uh, you know matter of fact sport in athletics. Craig, you do have some results, I think, or an update in the triple jump before we wrap up our coverage. Yeah, we'll just give them quickly the the place getters in the triple jump and the men's triple jump. Scott Thompson was the winner with 14:52 from Charles Devlin, 14:05. Ethan Gow, 1388. And in the women's triple jump, uh, Scott's sister Anna winning it with 1279 from Diana Izamagulova, 1161, and Helena Dennison, 1148. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Craig Motley, for your expertise here this afternoon. And thanks too to all the team, including Sarah Cowley Ross out there in the field. My name is Nick Bewley. It's been a privilege to be part of this coverage here from the International Track Meet in Napunawai. We'll see you in 2023.